Medina. Your backup camera is live. Do you have France, right. maybe? We don't have agendas. Oh, yeah. I have yeah, that. I don't know what you like. Your stream is live and muted. I don't know what the tag is for. I'm just holding this stuff. There it is. I found it. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Is that the one? I got the good one. I got the good one. I do it on purpose because it's recorded. I remove my system. Then you come back. Oh, did you get this book? The money. Yeah, the money. The money. The money. The money. Yeah. Monday. It's supposed to be announced today. Is Miss Brown not here? Miss Brown is not going to be here? Miss Brown is not going to be here? No. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And No, I'm going fast so tell me when you all are ready, and we have a quorum, and so we will get started whenever you tell us we can. So we will bring this finance committee meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mr. May. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Mr. Guerra. Yeah, here. Ms. Fields. Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthy? Present. Before we begin our agenda, I'd like to make a um, announcement that the Mayor's State of the City Address will be Monday, October 21st at 6 p.m. Point of order. At the Capitol Theater. What is your point of order, Mr. Mayor? Beyond saying that I know what this is Thank you, Mr. Mays. Thank you. That is my only announcement. There are, there, are there any changes and or additions to the agenda? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. If you want to announce something, I think that would be the proper time to do it. Now, just change the agenda. Um, as far as the special order, I'd like for them to come after the resolution, the action resolution. I would like for them to come after the resolution, and um, <clears throat> that'll be the change that I have. Let me go to the back and look. Um, we got new business before adjournment. That would be my only request at this time. The executive session would stay the same. After that, we go to resolutions, then we circle back to special orders or whatever we decide. Mr. Mays, you said after executive session resolution. Did you mean after public speaking? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Fields. Um, I'm sorry, first of all, what time on October 26th? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Um, I have a question, Madam Chair. 21st? Mm -hmm. um, doesn't the council have to vote on where the uh, mayor's state of the city has to be? I, I don't know. This Do you want to have a discussion? Year. Do you want that to be a change in yes. addition to the agenda? Yes. Mr. Mays, what's your point of view? Yeah, now we're there. Thank you. So where would you like that um, discussion on the mayor's um, state of the... After resolution. After resolution, there is a discussion on the... Do you Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Yeah, I would ask that that discussion come after agenda change. If Miss Fields don't mind. Miss Fields, he's he's asking that it would come after agenda <coughs> before executive session. Are you okay with that? After executive session. Are you okay with that? That's a little nitpicky. You done made the announcement. I wish we could just do it and then go into the executive session. I want the city to hear when the state of uh, union, uh, state of the city is. So I'm going to stick with 
I'm trying to keep it there. So um, then you want to vote on it separately since there's yeah, a difference? Yeah, let's vote on it separately. Okay. Anyone else that would like to make any um, changes and or additions to the agenda, Mr. Mayor? We ain't got the votes from what I see, but I want to test it anyway. So let's vote on that one separately. To put it? Yeah, right after the agenda changes, like you were to come on and make the announcement. I want to do that too. So, you know, it ain't going to matter. So we're separating the agenda. Is that what you want to do, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I want to, I want to start seeing these votes for the record. So anybody um, else have any changes and or um, additions to the agenda? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to vote on is to address right now the mayor's state of the city to be discussed right now. All in favor after of... After agenda. That was the request. After agenda changes versus after agenda. Yes. So we voted for it first. Because after agenda changes. No, we're very, if, if we're going to be fair then, we will vote on it the way that Ms. Fields recommended it because she was the first one to make that. So we would change. vote that it go After the resolutions. Right, so we vote on that first. Correct. See which one gets okay. five votes. If, either, so, if neither one, then what we do? Get five votes. Then we start over on that. So I'm okay with that. So... Right now, the first um, vote is going to be for um, the agenda to have executive session immediately following the vote, public speaking, resolutions, then followed by special or order. No, I mean, after resolutions would be addressing the mayor's state of the address, then special orders, and then. She had moved it up to after executive session. The other one was yeah. gone. That Madam Chair, I'll withdraw. You will? I will. Okay. So, um, so the agenda change would have the mayor's, the only one we're voting on, is have First discuss minister. the yeah. mayor's address of the <coughs> state of the city, followed by the executive session, public speaking, resolutions, special orders, and then we will follow the agenda as printed. All in favor of those changes, say aye. 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 Those that oppose, <laughs> so it passes. Thank you. So, um, the mayor's state of the city address will be Monday, October 21st at 6 p.m. at the Capitol Theater. More information will be forthcoming regarding logistics for the city council. Ms. Fields, you wanted to um, discuss whether this had to be voted on. Um, and so I don't know how you want to go there. Or I actually remember this from last year uh, when Council uh, President um, okayed this. This is actually a city council meeting, and I think I think council has to vote. To change location of the meeting. Okay, so Mr. May. I, if I had time, I'd find it in the rules, but I wasn't given any right. warning that this was coming up, so I'll look for it. What was this memo for us? Mr. May? Madam Chair, that's why that rule that was proposed about stating the point of order in the exact rule is going to be a little much. Even in this case, it would be a little much because people have to research stuff, but they object to it. They, I'm just telling you, just think about what we just came out of about when you object or do points, you need to state a specific rule. I know the charter and things to say that either the mayor or two council persons can call a meeting. And in that particular rule, um, I don't know if it states what place and time. I do know that you can call meetings at different places. And I'm going to agree if that's what the mayor wants to do it at the Capitol. And if Ms. Fields don't agree to do it at the Capitol, we'll find out now. Because while I got the flow, I'm going to move that we do all things necessary to accommodate that date and location as a council to appear for the mayor's state of the city address. So, Mr. Mayor, 
So are you moving that to council? Because we can't do anything. We can vote here. in here, and if we have to move it to council, that's why we say do all things necessary. Oh, yes. And my motion is so made. There's a motion on the floor to do all things necessary. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I probably Mr. second. Davis, it has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Ms. Worthing, Ms. Field will follow, and then Mr. Briggs. I would like some specifics as far as how much does it cost for us to go to the Capitol instead of here, where uh, it's where we usually work uh, and free. Also, um, any associated cost with that, police, uh, workers, because I know there are workers there, people directing traffic, parking is really hard right there at the Capitol. Um, my concern from last year was it seemed more like a campaign rally than an actual state of the city. Um, and I left feeling pretty, it was pretty awkward. Um, this should be a council meeting. It should be a state of the city, not a, not a concert. Wow. Not a, you have the right to your own opinion, Mr. Mr. Davis. Um, I know Trump likes to have those types of rallies, um, but I certainly don't support the rah-rah. For the information, um, I'm out of order. I'm sorry. I just came out. I can't interrupt her. I'll take all that back and take um, But I don't see the need for it in a city in which we're struggling. We don't have resources. So I need an explanation from the mayor before I can vote for a change of location. Why? How much? And why can't we do it here, where the citizens request should be coming here for, um, what's your request for information? Does she need it just from the mayor, or can it come anyway? Well, that's not really a point um, that, that needed to be asked, because the information is going to come from the administration. Oh, sorry. Um, I've never actually seen the mayor here answering a question. So if administration so chooses, they can give us that information. Um, but I, I would like that information so that we can make an effective decision. If it's going to cost us taxpayers money to hold a campaign rally for the mayor, then I think that we should all know that. How much is it going to cost us? And why can't we do it in City Hall where business gets done? Why are we changing the venue like it's a concert or a program or a Trump rally? I'm done. Uh, what's your request for information? Capacity of City Hall compared to the Capitol Theater. Thank you very much. In other words, capacity. Miss okay. um, Field? Uh, number one, that wasn't a true request for information, but I'd like to refer you to Rule 5.1. All meetings of the City Council and all committees of the Council shall take place in the Council Chambers on the third floor of City Hall or in other such places as the Council may determine. Now, the State of the City Address is at a Council meeting, and I'm in agreement um, with, with uh, the member who wants to know how much is this going to cost, because we know that here at the City, there's nothing no cost for the venue, um, and, and okay. I'm in agreement. So I would like to offer an amended motion that, uh, a substitute motion actually, that this vote is postponed until the administration can give us the cost to the taxpayer of holding that meeting at the Capitol Theater venue. There's a motion to postpone this vote until there is a cost to taxpayers for the mayor's venue for the state of the city. Is there a second to that? Ms. Worthy? I it has been moved and seconded. Mr. Mays? Yeah, Madam Chair. You know, in motion, before we do stuff, if we really acting in good faith, we would say through you, Madam Chair, or any council person would say, through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Branch or somebody, do you know if there's a cost associated with this, Mr. Yes. Branch? And do you know the cost? I do not know the cost. Right um, can you find out the yes. cost um, before this meeting is up? I'm looking for it now. And where it will be paid from? Because we did have it last time there, correct? Correct. And it was a cost, correct? Correct. And it didn't have nothing to do with Trump, correct? Correct. And it was it an election? 
No. I don't think so. So this ain't nothing new, and I don't like the inferences on stuff that we've done before because some of my colleagues are so newly political, and they talk about doing business here, but I wish they would come and stay and do business here. And so I wouldn't care if we voted for pipe replacement millions of dollars at Hasselbrink, wouldn't care if we did it at Brennan, and wouldn't care if we did it at the Capitol. I've been on um, council meetings, long. I remember we, it was a council meeting held at the job court. And we said we'd get out of the halls of city hall sometime. And so I'm going to be in favor of doing just as we did before. I thought it was a highly dignified state of the city address. Didn't have nothing to do with Trump. See, people like to drop names when they try to do stuff negatively. Now, Trump ain't had to come up here talking about like Trump. <laughs> Why you didn't say like Mays or Neely or Weaver? Right. You know, we are our own people in Flint, Michigan. What if I said you was analogous to Trump? Y'all be hollering, point of order, he can't talk about me. So I'm used to the double standard of the way we talk around this table. And so I'm going to address it every time they go low. I'm going to highlight it, you know, because we on, we on TV. We on the cameras. This ain't just the people in this room hearing this. We have had the state of the city. I ain't got no problem with postponing it, Mr. Davis, and because we finna get the answers. We knew it was a cost last year, and we know it's a cost this year. And whatever years we've done it, I've never heard this before. Miss Gap, Miss Miss Worthen say she was there, but she left feeling what way? Order. There's remember we just talked about not calling each other's names. Oh, but it ain't in the roof. I'm going to call folks now. It is. I'm going to say to I'm Mr. Sorry, Davis. Order. It, it is in Robert's Rules of Order. Our council rules do not address it. Our council rules address no personal right. attacks. Absolutely. And so I'm talking business about what's factually been said at this table by a certain council member. I said Mr. Davis' name and I said her name as it relates to Trump. And now I'm asking her, she stated on the record, she felt a certain way when she left. And I'm trying to say through you, Madam Chair, can you repeat to me what you said you felt, how you left the state of the city address? How did you say you felt when you left? Ms. Worthy? I, I don't know you think you are, but this is debate. This is not okay. an inquisition. I'll run the tape back and see what you said, how you felt when you left, but it was negative. When I left the state of the city, I didn't feel like you did. And you and Miss Fields, anybody else, don't have to show up. Order. He's still personal attacks, naming names. I did not mention Mr. Mays when I spoke. You didn't have to mention me. But all I'm doing is asking <laughs> questions about, I, you, I'm concerned. Right, Mr. Mays, I'm asking that you would keep it in context to how you felt. And just talk about you, please. You, I you was feeling a second. certain way, but I think I do have to care about how my colleagues felt. Now, if she felt bad leaving the Capitol and she alluded to that and she don't want to repeat it, I'll go home and watch the film. That might affect my vote. If somebody feel bad like she's implied, and I think it's relevant, if she can say she feel point bad. Point of order. What's your point of order? stopped. I'm going to continue to call point of order until he's made to move on. Call for he the orders is. of the day. He is. Because he? he's yes, still he mentioning is. me. We are on a motion to postpone, and my decision to postpone is going to have something to do with how folks feel. If they felt uncomfortable on the north end, I want to know. Mr. Major, time is up. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chairman and Dorgan. It's kind of disheartening. We just point of information. What is your Did point you of stop the time when she was interrupted me, or you kept it going? She didn't interrupt yes, she me. Yes, she did. Come on, Mr. Two, Mays. three times. Mr. Mays, I the gave you longer time. Yeah, it will. Well, thank you for graciousness. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chairman and Dorgan. It's very disheartening. We came out of our rules committee meeting with a fair, fairly well meet, uh, uh, get together. But for the animosity that's in this room that's carrying over and over and over, the mayor had to say the city last year. It was a beautiful event. 
the capacity was overwhelming the Capitol Theater. And I know this here building don't facilitate that. I think the mayor, if anything, she might need to move it over to the White House. It's a very good, positive uh, uh, event for the city and see the state of recovery. Now, yes, it's political, and don't stop me when I say what I'm finna say. Because the mayor, since my colleague want to make mention without saying the uh, opponent that's going against the mayor right now, the mayor did a lot of things downtown. Why wouldn't she get credit for what she done downtown? All of the development she done downtown, including Capitol Theater downtown. Now, where better place would she want to be other than downtown to show off what she done downtown as well as all over the city? I like to know why. Because why? Politically, the, 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 the person that's running against the mayor haven't done nothing. So don't try to dispel what the mayor has done because your, your choice of a candidate haven't done nothing. I can say it because she's jumping on the mayor, nobody comes to the defense, I'm coming. Because what the mayor done to this city at, at the, from crisis to recovery is amazing. The mayor order, should, don't you, order. We are not allowed to make political speeches. What well, you it's tell that to your my colleague? Out of order. It is what was my colleague saying? Nope. It part, was about cost. Go ahead. What's your, your, what's your point of order? I appeal the ruling of the chair and I, as it's out of order. That's second. an appeal of the decision and of I the second. chair. It has been seconded. And okay, I, you guys. What? So, mm -hmm. uh, as the chair, you appeal in my ruling. Oh, you're right. And I'm just saying. This is supposed to be about the council rules that state clearly that this council does have the right to talk about where this is going to be held. It is appropriate for a colleague to say, I want to know how much this is going to cost for the taxpayers. And so her feelings of it being a political venue that's an opinion. Now you're talking about candidates, though, and we're talking okay. about a specific. So okay. that's why I said that it was very much. So, Mr. Mays, you, Mr. Appeal, now you have the floor, sir. Point of order. There's no point of order. You have point the floor. Of order. There's no point, point of order. Point of order. What is your point of order? You can't give me the floor unless I ask for it. I ain't oh. asked for the floor. I might want to wait to last. So don't put me in a trick back. Point of order, you out of order. I didn't ask for the Just floor. Just for the this record, time. typically in the rules, it says whoever makes the appeal and or makes the motion is the first person to discuss. I will move on. Who would show like it to me? You ain't gonna find that in the room. You just yes, made that up. Well, show it to Go me. Ahead. Ahead. Do, do, would you like to? Yes. Say, you, now, you weren't interrupted you because I, I have the point of request of information. You want me to read the rules on appeal? It say you speak first as the chair. I don't right. tell you what council member speaks second. Or after you, you want me to read it for the record? You can. Okay, you I will. Mr. Bates? Because you done made a statement okay. here. And look, That's and, listen and to this. And go to the other one, too. Motion. Our parliamentarian, Sorry. Our parliamentarian just told us that when there is an appeal on the floor and there is an additional point of order, there is no appeal to that. Right. There is. The Where's she going to make me speak? Chair first. rules, and that's I it. Did. There's no appeal once I'm there's an appeal. <laughs> right, you're right. Once well, there's already no the point on the floor. So he's doing the order. She's doing the order. She's doing the same thing. Right. And so, Let's but the thing on. about Let's it, thank you, Mr. Mays. Mr. Davis, you have the floor. So now we're on an appeal. Go ahead, sir. One reason I would vote against this because I can speak for myself. My ward, a lot of the constituents in my ward would like to, we want to be able to have the capacity that. I got less than 8,000 people in my ward, and I know a percentage can't get in here. This is an annual uh, uh, event to where they, the mayor can say everything. All the orders of the day. You're Point right. Of order. We're on Point our of order. There she is, can't interrupt the is flow. A there is is for mean? a parliamentary, I mean, uh, she, for a call right, for the right. orders of the day is. It ain't going to happen here. The discussion is on the appeal. <laughs> it is. It's on the appeal. They're not going to bulldog here. So, she who, didn't have a flow to call for the orders of the day. You she, got to have a flow to call I, for the question. That is Get that out of my Jerry. face and stay in your lane. Mr. Don't Mayor. be putting nothing over here to me, no. Eva. Now, I'm that telling was, you. That was well we within the this. rules. I ain't reading nothing. And so, Mr. May, I, I mean, Mr. Davis, you are you, you can continue. And, but this is on no, the no. appeal. 
appealing my ruling that we should not be discussing okay, this political right. agenda. Don't let it's back. political. I ain't gonna say the candidate's name, but don't let it enter into this this here room right now because it's clear my colleagues want to be political with their candidate in mind. Because you blatantly disrespecting the man in this political season, I'm not gonna go for it, and I'm gonna say something every time because they ain't gonna bulldoze nobody. When I especially when this city hurting the way it is, and we got somebody working for us, and they gonna try to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to get back. Yeah, it's on the appeal. Thank you. I'm done, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm done. I'm sorry. Um, let me say, all of this maneuvering and waste of time is what it is. Now, we have been the vote, but I'm not going to allow folks to sit here and throw Trump out. Right. Call the party of the day. She Mr. can't Mayor, interrupt the this, flow. To, she can. It's she an can. appeal. It's I, an appeal, I, I and you are not related Yes, sir, I am related to it. You ruled him out of order for political discussion. Right. And you, I don't want discrimination and different treatment because when you bring Trump in, right. in a comparison, that's politics all day long. That didn't have nothing to do with the cost. It didn't have nothing all to do. All orders of the day. She yeah. can't keep calling out. Can you tell her she's out of order? No, she, no, if we can I'm interrupt the man. flow, okay, watch this. I'm going to vote no, and I hope you don't get five votes, Santino, that folks is being treated differently. Now, every time y'all speak through the rest of the day, I'm going to just holler out, call for the orders of the day, call for the orders of the day. I ain't going to have the flow, and I'm going to keep hollering it out, and I don't want to be treated differently than that lady. Now, you going to sit here and tell me I've been a council person for six years, You've been ones for six years. They knew, and you've been to let them tell you you can holler out as chair and say, cause of the day, do you want they vote? I'm telling you, I don't want nobody's vote that bad. It's never been like that in council meeting. And if it's going to be like that today, Ms. Galloway, grab the saddle and the harness. Because Councilman Mays will be hollering out repeatedly when they talking on purpose. Call for the order. You should be saying, Miss Fields, you out of order. You don't have the flow. Now, that's what I'm telling you. So my position is this. That's like call for the question. And everybody, yes, it is. So my position is this. The order of the day is that I'm, 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 change. I'm not voting for postponement. And I'm not going to vote to uphold you in an appeal where she talking Trump and you're going to tell him he can't talk politics. Trump is such a bad name politically. Now, you know I'm ignorant, and I don't even like to be called Trump. So when you got folks mixing Trump with Mayor Weaver. Point of order. What is your point of order? Madam Chair, this council member is persistently talking, making the conversation political, which is That's against what the our council rules. That's what the appeal is. This is not a political yes, it is. discussion. It's a political appeal. Nice. Ms. Galloway, Mr. you Mayor. know that the appeal is whether you can talk politics. And I'm saying if one council person can talk Trump in politics and they are white female, a black male can talk politics. We're not going to discriminate on who can talk politics. That's why I appealed you. I clearly heard her talking politics. And so now her, my interpretation of her politics is just like I interpret his. Both of them was talking politics, except for he got checked for his political talk and she did, so I appeal. I don't like different treatment. If she wanted to know how much it costs, that didn't have nothing to do with Trump. And so my position is this, I'm gonna vote no on your ruling that in, in essence, that she can talk politics and get off of the financial subject, but when he talk politics, he's checked. So I don't agree with different treatment. Check her when she talk politics and get off the subject of costs, because I was going to postpone it just to get the costs. But then it went into politics. Now let me call you Trump. Let me call me Trump. Let me call anybody Trump. I ain't said nothing publicly in this mayor's race. So I'm going to talk the way I talk, but I'm not going to let some folks talk negative politics, Trump politics in comparison, and then somebody else talk politics, and you rule can't be no politics. 
Oh, we in a political arena, ma'am, and I know it very well. So I'm going to be quiet because Ms. Winfrey Carter, I'm voting no. Mr. Davis, I'm voting no. Would that be the proper vote? I appeal the ruling, yes, and if you well, vote sir. yes, you agree with you that you ain't treating them differently. If you vote no, you agree that, hey, unless we don't stop all of them, don't stop one. The key to this vote going to be Santino, and I'm going to end with this politics. Oh, I'm worried. that's going to be the vote. You you think I'm wrong? The vote on whether this appeal, and I've got the right to... What's your point of order? Uh, it seems to me that that's harassment. It's intimidation. You're absolutely right, buddy. Well, I disagree that it's intimidation. It's, it's factual. It's factual. I think I know how he going to vote. I think I know how I'm going to vote. And I think I know how she going to vote. And it's only five left. And Miss Galloway ain't going to vote against herself. Y'all stick together in a group. So I'm going to say it again, because that's my job in the middle of politics and trying to get votes. This vote, in my opinion, going to come down to you. And I'm going to see what you do with it, because you're, you're trying to Davis. run for something, Thank you ain't so you? much. <laughs> you want me to stay ready? No, that's politics. Mr. Major, this time is up. <laughs> this vote and this discussion is an appeal on the ruling of the chair. The chair ruled that the discussion was political and was not relevant and is not allowed because it was a specific political discussion about current candidates in city government. So I will certainly be support the ruling of the chair. Thank you. And so is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? So as the chair, I get to wrap up. Um, Mr. Mays appealed me. There, he's, he's mixing apples and oranges. Miss Worthing spoke about Trump and the behavioral of what she deemed this looked like at the Capitol. Not the candidates. I'm wrapping up, Mr. Davis. Come on now, right? And so, whereas Mr. Davis began to talk about the very two candidates and what the one candidate wasn't doing, and so they were not the same thing. That discussion that she had made was already done. He was on his discussion. It was appealed by actually, I mean, um, point of order by Mrs. Um, Fields. And I agreed that we had gotten so far off that we were literally being here supporting one candidate and opposing another, clearly. And so that is why I said that is right. This needs to stop. So with that in mind, all those that support the decision of the chair say aye. 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 Those that oppose, the decision of the chair stands. Mr. Davis, if you would yeah, like right. to continue, Mr. Mays, you are <laughs> them intimidating, them intimidating, them intimidating, them intimidating. Them that is, out of order. but you are out of order, and yeah. I'm going to rule you out of order one time. So, Thank you. Madam and so Chair, it's, can I get the floor? Actually, it's not your turn. And so we are on Mr. Davis, because your time exhausted. Mr. Davis was in the middle. He said he was done. But I'm going to give you a fair opportunity in case I'm, I move on to Mr. Griggs, who is next. Well, I would like to say this. Last year, everyone enjoyed the mayor's state of union. I, my constituents would love to see the mayor this year on the other side of recovery now. And they really, they really, really want to be there. And, I will, and a lot of my constituents are handicapped. They're older. And these stairs... They got provisions at the Capitol that this building don't, this older building with elevators. You can get into the Capitol, they got provision for that. So I'm excited for the mayor and the state of the union, as well as my constituents be able to freely go, and they're expecting to hear great things that happened in the city this year. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And so Mr. Griggs yeah. is next, followed by Ms. Fields, and followed by Mr. Bear. You already spoke. No, I didn't. You tried to make me speak first. I said of, I wasn't okay. going to speak so first. So let me just clarify. You so, Mr. Mays, you were talking about the appeal. We're done That's with correct. that. We're now in postponement. That's you correct. spoke on I the didn't. postponement. You tried to make me speak first. I tried to make you speak first on the appeal, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Griggs, you are we next. Get twice on the postponement? Yes. Only if you have time. To. So. You don't. So, Mr. Griggs, it's your turn, sir. Okay. Uh, can I get up for a second? You can, sir. Thank you. 
two things. One, man, uh, y'all better get down here. Mr. These Mr. people Mr. is out. Point of oh. order, Mr. Mays. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you said I could get up. Mr. Mays, it's inappropriate for you to. No, it ain't. Stay out cold. Come on, First Ward. Come on, First Ward. Um, <laughs> man, it ain't inappropriate. This is insane. It is absolutely not. And if you don't, if we don't change something, he's gonna. So, Mr. Griggs, you can go ahead and finish. Mr. Mays, you're disrupting the meeting, and that is your final warning. After that, you will be removed from the meeting. Thank you, sir. Mr. Griggs, you can you can start your discussion. I'm waiting on Councilman Mays to stop. You shut the door behind you. Mr. Griggs, you have the floor, so. Okay, two points. One, <laughs> where, where is the memo for this changing of our uh, council meeting in 12 more days? Is there a memo? I haven't seen one, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next thing, why don't we uh, allow this circus to happen at the Capitol Theater? And let, let a crowd of theaters see the circus what, full what, hand. Why not take the Let's have the... Whoa, whoa, point of order. Yeah, what's your point of order? How does man go... Oh, oh, the man said of the union of circus. Mr. Green, okay. and let Mr. Okay. 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 Point of order. Will you warn no, him not to disrespect, man? This is blatant disrespect now. Wait a minute. This man is blatantly disrespecting the administration. Thank you, sir. I already did. Yes. And I called a point of information. That's blatant disrespect. Well, but there's a point of order, you guys. One parliamentarian opportunity. I point of information. Miss, you will, Ms. Winfrey Carter, okay. please give me a second. And so I have addressed your point of order as valid. Mr. Griggs, that is a personal attack. You need to refrain from that. Okay. If you have something to say, you will say it. What is your point of order, Miss Carter? I want to know, what, Mr. Griggs, what do you mean by circus? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it's That's racial. Come on, you guys. You know what? It's a circus. You know what? I'm going to um, well, that we are going to have a recess. This does not have to go this way, I'm talking you guys. To you. And so you, got the you have won. Come out, you can get the police to Ms. Green, me please, Miss Green, I'm Where asking you. I'm asking you, Mr. Davis, you know it's inappropriate for you to go oh, back and forth with him. That's racist. Come on now. I'm asking you, Mr. Davis. Point of there's a point of information on the floor. Point of there's a point of information <coughs> on the floor. I object to the recess. I can't. I can't object no, to the recess. She on, said a five-minute so recess. I'm objecting. We want to answer or not. The she want to be president and change control. You don't know what you're talking about. You need to stop talking. Okay, well, I hope she's voting for me. I hope she's voting for me. Never, ever, no, ever. No, we already On my that. deathbed, it wouldn't happen. You got to get okay, an order, Mr. stay Chris. focused. Maybe we I'm should. Morning, you got an order. He's answering your question. You Maybe we should have this council meeting at the capitol so that our citizens understand the way our meeting is. So, thank you, thank you Mr. Griggs, Ms. Fields. I'd like to say, I'd like to say first of all that the precedence that this was held at the Capitol Theater last year was actually an illegal precedence. We had the same rule that I just read uh, last year, and unfortunately, our council president took upon himself the authority of the entire council, which was incorrect. And I did voice my objection after he had done that. The point of this matter on the cost is, and I'll make that referral to Mr. Branch, I would like the difference in the cost, what we have to pay at the Capitol Theater for the lighting crew, for the sound crew, for uh, any extra anything that occurs, uh, videotaping, uh, policing or security, any cost that we would have at the Capitol Theater, that would be the taxpayers would have to pay for, that they would not have to pay for here at Council. 
I have no objections to having meetings in various places throughout the city to make it more accessible to the residents and their wards. But to me, this is an unnecessary expense. And the function of government, a state of the city, is here at City Hall. And I want to know, because I would least like to know, and I think council people should know, how much this is going to cost the taxpayers, <clears throat> having it at the Capitol Theater versus having it at the City Hall. Because at least when you make your decision, you'll have all of the facts. And then you can justify to your residents why uh, we have these many fewer police or these many potholes not being filled, et cetera, this much blight not being picked up because uh, someone wanted to hold this event at the Capitol Theater rather than City Hall. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gare. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing with the postponement just to see how much it's going to cost the residents. I think regardless of who you are, it's important to know how much things are going to cost before you get there. Um, I think last year the event was an uh, interesting event because people were able to come in more people came out to see the theater for the first time. So maybe there will be a positive impact with more residents physically watching it. However, they should know how much it's going to cost uh, before we get there. So I'm not saying it's a negative thing. I think we should just see how much it's going to cost. I do agree uh, in regards to the council meeting. I don't think we should raise the rules. And I don't think the council would object to hosting the mayor's of course, day of the city address. However, I know that congressionally, I couldn't imagine a president not speaking at the, uh, the House, a representative of doing the state, state address and doing it somewhere else, just keeping with the lady. But we've done it. However, if it works best for the residents, I think it would be a good thing to do as long as we know the cost. So did anyone else that has not spoken like to speak? Okay, not Ms. Fields. Um, this is a referral request. In addition to knowing how much the proposed cost would be this year, I would like a printout of the detailed costs and the amounts with the total of what it cost last year. And also, this is to include any limousine services that were provided, any special meals, etc., that came out of taxpayers' dollar budget. Thank you. And so, point of information. You don't have to have the point of information. Well, Would you I would like, like to speak. speak. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, so, the motion on the floor is to postpone it to the next uh, committee meeting or to postpone it to special affairs. Did we make that? It was that? just a postponement until the information is received. Okay. <laughs> Which would probably be to special affairs, right? No, fair. Yeah. I would like to, I'll do a substitute motion to say special affairs is more specific. Yes. So that's the soonest meeting. So my motion is to amend this to say on um, special affairs. Special affairs. So there's an amended motion to send and yeah, postpone this to special affairs. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, I, I just yeah, have one question. Nobody else does. Um, can you reread re the rule for that? It's rule 5.1. All meetings of the City Council and all committees of the Council shall, to shall take place in the Council Chambers on, order. Did on, the, say just council or administration on the third the floor of City Hall or at other such places as the Council may determine. Okay. Um, just for the record, the Mayor's State of the City is a Council meeting. We call it to order. We end it at the end. So it is officially a special meeting for the, cap for the Mayor to have a state of the city. And so that's all I had. All in favor of postponing this to special affairs, say aye. Aye. Those that oppose. Nay. Thank you. So it passes to special affairs pending that information. So now we are at an executive session. Um, an executive session is requested by the Department of Law to update the City Council regarding the following. One, Jimmy Dollar versus City of Flint, workers' compensation number W1700-2999. Number two, Alicia Finney, damage claim. And three, pending civil litigation with Austin Morgan. Would the um, legal department like to share for the record? Right, thank you. The City Attorney's Office requests an executive session for the purposes of discussing pending litigation or notices of intent to sue um, and also um, cases within the um, workers' compensation tribunal. And since having an open session would have a detrimental effect, we would request that in matters of 
Jimmy Dollar versus City of Flint Workers' Compensation case number W170029999. Alicia Finney, a damage claim, and also do you want the case number for uh, and also Austin Morgan or City of Flint versus City of Flint versus Austin Morgan Company, uh, nineteen dash one one three zero four eight ch. Madam Chair, Ms. Fields. I make a motion that we uh, go into executive closed session for the purposes stated by the attorney. There is a motion to go into second. executive second. session. Is there a second? Mr. Yeah, sure. Briggs has seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, roll call. Somebody. Is it appropriate for us to do yeah, it? Hey, Lyle. It's not recording. <laughs> Can't they do a roll call on their own? No. Some <laughs> call. You gotta no. change the tape. Uh, Why am I going to be? I think it's Janelle. It's not Davina anymore. Mr. Mays? Mr. Davis? Yes. Vera? Yes. Fields? Yes. Mr. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. So we are going into executive session. So whenever you are ready, you can. We are back in our um, finance meeting, and now we will have public speaking. For those of you that would like to address this council, you will be giving two minutes to address the council. We just ask that you say your name for the record. Is there anyone that would like to address this council? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Ms. My Cole. name is R. L. Mitchell. And I want to address Ms. Coco, the one from uh, my college, coming here trying to get from Mr. Worthy, trying to give us the council another lesson. I like you don't know the Robert Rules of Order, and she come in here and talking about uh, politician. 
I can be a politician thanks to the uh, the chair, the president of the council, Mr. Win Mr. Winfrey. You see, he ain't here. He said I can talk until the cows come home. The cows is and what he talked about is the president of the United States was scared to come to Flint and uh, that Daniel Duncan who messed up Flint water and the other the one who tried to take the mayor down. Nearly. Who up to talk about the water is good to drink and all that stuff like me, Flintstone don't know what we're talking about. And you, Miss Galloway, pushing in with that other council over there, that dude over there, Morrell, act, looking under I act, act, and running for political. Listen here, amigo. The wall is not built yet. That's from the border. Now take that. And what you don't see about that? I'm talking about political attack. What? That's inappropriate. Please. You don't give me enough time to say how much minutes I got, lady, to go. And another thing. Right, and Miss Coco, she over there at my former high school, Southwestern, at the in at the uh, PTA meeting, trying to regulate over there, talking about no special rooms in in Flint. You got to go on the outside of the Flint to put all special. And the whole city of Flint is special after they done drunk all that water. So they're trying to get rid of all the Flint stone, but that ain't gonna happen. Like General Motors, they do. I like they put the, they one check away from being homeless. They're already homeless and trying to. Trying to call Red Lake and think somebody hey, is some dummy for us. Who you think you? Morello? Who you? And you all like, no. That's all I'm going to say. My minutes is up. Oh, oh, oh. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? If you do, just please stand up and say your name for the record. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Yeah. yeah no? Okay. My name is Corday Hawkins, and I'm uh, talking about the um, address uh, 617, uh, 621 East Alma Street. Uh, there's a situation going on there. Uh, there's water in the basement. I've been on, well, uh, talking back and forth with Land Bank for over uh, three years, and I've been uh, dealing with Mr. Mays about this situation. And the, the, the thing of it is, is that um, there's six feet, over six feet of standing water in the basement, and um, you know there's a lot of uh, gnats, mosquitoes, and stuff like that. And I stay right next door. And um, even when my wife, she, she, she uh, passed away uh, this past November last year. And, you know, she even been trying to get this house demolished. But they've been giving us the runaround. I, I got uh, Jim. Uh, he, he sent me a, a, a voicemail stating that the funds have been pulled from, for this house because uh, the city will not allow land bank to pump water out of that basement. So this is the hold up why this house will not be tore down. So I, I wish whatever needs to be done, because I got my, my grandkids, they live with me, and you know, he loves going, looks toping his head down in there. I had to put uh, some wood there because you know it got bars on it, but he could squeeze through there and maybe fall in. So that that's that's a hindrance, you know, that uh, uh, accident could happen. Any, you know, kind of little thing could happen. Can you say the address one more time? 621 East Alma Street. All right. Yeah. And just so, so everyone knows that speaks to the council, the council will have an opportunity to address anything that they choose after you all have spoken. Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? If you say your name for the record, please. Okay. For the My name is Libby Bell. I stay at property 1813 West Hodgkin in Flint and um, I just want to know why y'all don't want to give those houses back to those, those individuals. Like I'm a first time homeowner, my parents, um, obviously the, I guess the water bill was attached to that home. Um, Ms. Galloway, I walked with you, I don't know if you remember, I was the only person that walked with you during the election. <laughs> Oh, uh, during your campaign, it was me, you, Miss Barbie Biggs, and I walked around doing bottle collection and asking people, would you vote for Monica Galloway? And I, I sat in these meetings and I said, well, why, why she don't want to get those properties back to those people? Because I'm one of those individuals that helped her when nobody else was out there walking through. We walked up and down your ward. You remember that? When we went from house to house on, and during those elections, me and you, we walked. Ward, ward, me and you, Barbie Biggs, we met you at Stewart Elementary. And nobody else got out to walk with you during that time, during your election. And it's like then, like, she one of the people that's on the, like, I, I walked with her in her ward, helping her going door to door with her, asking people would they vote for Monica Galloway, and she don't even want to help me get my house back. Like, damn. 
like straighter, like that's fucked up. Like if I look at you as a as an African American woman, like and she sit on the board, then she can do some great things for Clint. And then when I see you sitting in, in these meetings and bickering with somebody that's trying to help us make sure we keep those houses in the city, it's like, like really straight up? Like, dang, like, you tell me you share personal information with me about, you know, your life, like, you come from Cali and all these great stories about you, and, like, I'm in the process of about to lose my house, and you about, every time you come up, you like, no, 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 I'm like, dang, like, damn, like, that's what our council doing? I'll address you as soon as I work on your time to Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? Madam Chair, I'll address her too if you're allowing us to say that. If no. you say it, we'll say it. I'll address I already her too. mentioned what that. You, we so you didn't have to Mr. say that. Now, yes, Mr. Mays, really? Thank you, sir. It was personal, but Please. you broke the rule. Okay. Warn Here yourself. Go ahead, sir. Um, my, name say is, your name. my name is uh, Richard Jones. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Allen Griggs because I heard you as the fifth vote that allowed this process to even get here with these houses. Um, I've been in all of your wards, the ones that didn't vote for it. And if y'all had a town hall and y'all talked to your constituents, I guarantee each one of y'all will have more than nine residents that walk up to you and say, I want my house or my property or I own a house. Some went in that form to say that they will want. Some will probably say they want to turn it into a youth club. Some may say they want to turn it into a rest. Some would be just like this lady. I would just want to continue to live with where I'm at. This should be a notch on your record instead of something that's going to hunt you when election time come around. Believe me, it was one guy I was out collecting signatures. I had on an orange shirt. He stopped me on the grass. I didn't even step on the sidewalk leading up to his house. Oh no, get away from here. Going in on. Then he asked me what was I for. Oh no, I like her. I love her and all this. I said, well you just make sure you tell her the next time she have a chance to help somebody keep their house before land bank give them, that she take the opportunity. Oh, come here, sir, what you talking about? I said, give me that piece of paper, let me sign my name. That's how serious it is. It's real simple. I would, if I was any one of y'all, what I would do, I would be picking nine houses every chance I got. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? Say your name to the record, please. Claire McClinton, second ward. Uh, in case people might not have noticed, we have a strike going on in Flint. General Motors, UAW is on strike. Flint is the home of General Motors. This is a very tough fight. And those of you that have been following it know that General Motors is playing hardball yes. in this. We've got, I am fortunate that I was able to retire from General Motors, but those who came after us cannot even, don't even have a pension. They do not have a pension. They do not have retiree health care. So they've got the two tier and the at-will employees, this is some serious business. Now, I know that you all think that everything that you're talking about is important, but this strike is important because if the workers lose this strike, y'all's council meeting's gonna be radically different. <laughs> it's gonna be different. You're gonna have some issues to challenge because you're gonna lose the property taxes and you're gonna lose the income taxes generated by these workers. So I would like to know if the council is prepared to stand up and say that you support the UAW workers. 
And you need to call General Motors out for them being not bargaining in good faith because for years, I know at least since the 70s, every council that served, they all gave General Motors big tax abatements. 50% for 12 years, Public Act 98, State of Michigan. And I'm wrapping up. And General Motors always got that. The government bailed General Motors out in 2008. General Motors has paid them back, but they won't pay, pay it forward and give the workers back what they sacrificed. So i like to see this council use your authority, your governmental influence, send telegrams to General Motors, uh, look at, this might be longer than what we had hoped. Look at having a provision for our water, no shutoffs or striking workers. I mean, you guys got some things that y'all can do to stand up and help these workers and help, and in turn, help this city. Thank so you. I hope you'll do that. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? Um, all I got want to say is amen to what she just said. And I did come to you guys before about the same situation. Can you say your name for the record? Quincy Murphy. Mm -hmm. And here I come walking in. And my sister girl, Claire McClinton, is singing the same tune. And um, one of my co-workers work at Lear. Um, came here from Virginia. The, um, didn't qualify for unemployment. Been living in a motel a block away from here, across from the... And Thursday is his last day. And he ain't over here to... Um, so this is really affecting our community. And if you guys could write a letter or something, and this is the same thing I asked when I came here before, write a letter and do some kind of resolution and say y'all support the strikers or something instead of just saying, oh, we support the stri stri strikers individually, <clears throat> come together collectively as a council and say, we want to agree to come up with some kind of resolution and ask, have y'all clerk um, put together a resolution to submit to let us know y'all support us and just just saying y'all support it. Show us something right that y'all support us. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Any name for the record, please? Masson Green. Okay, now I am gonna play the race card. As a black female, or African American female, it hurts my feelings when we, as a, as a race, we always ready to pull the race card at any given moment. <laughs> I have been literally sick over this weekend with some of the garbage that has been on Facebook. Where, and I look, I'm not even talking about women against women. I'm talking about men. And I'm talking about black men degrading and talking about women. It is fine if you want to support your candidate. That's fine. I look, I do somebody's hair every other Saturday and I know what her I know who her husband is but we don't cross that line because we know we on opposite side so we don't cross that line we remain friends but when you sit and you attack a woman on Facebook on social media and I'm talking about three African American men that's in this community that's well known and you sit and you degrade women I'm not going to be the one you will not degrade an African American woman, and you won't degrade any woman in my sight. That is, get up against one of these men, degrade these men, go up in, against these men on social media. But you block them, and you don't want to talk to them, and all of that. That's fine. But why are you attacking women on social media? That's a punk move. That is a straight punk move. You're running around here acting like the scarecrow, the tin man, and the cowardly lion running after the damn eyes. It's ridiculous, all this. Yeah, it is a circus, Mr. Green. It's a circus. <laughs> now, it was, am I being racial too? It's a circus. This is ridiculous. This stuff has stirred up my PTSD. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? Is there anyone else that would like to address this council first? Is there anyone else that would like to address this council? 
this council. Yeah. Now we'll go to it's council it's discussion. It's Who would like to address the residents Madam first? Chair. Mr. Mitchell. Let me get this two minutes out of the way. You can't even address people under these stupid rules in two minutes. These are two of them from my ward, and you can't do it. They just got stupid rules here. Our job is to address y'all. Ma'am, I don't believe women should degrade men, black or white. It go both ways. See, I'm all good with women, but at the same time, women are talk about me like a dog. They didn't call me a racist, a misogynist. I was nice. I say I'm Eric Mason. It's, I don't know if you racist. Y'all need to get in an uproar when women talk nasty. There's some nasty women out here. Some of them on this council, and they're attacked. So I go look at it both ways. I don't discriminate for gender. We had Rob Benzik up here, sir. Rob Benzik, Angela, I seen you talking to him, was the DPW director. We talked specifically about pumping that water out of the basement. He said we got to test the water before we can pump it. This has been going on for two years. I asked him to come here. People need to pay attention. And here's ain't the only house with water in the basement. Funded, ready to be towed down, and the land bank in the city arguing about who can pump water out of the basement into a sewer. It's ridiculous. Thanks for coming. You are 100% right. I didn't know you had campaigned for her. And she is one of the council people said we shouldn't give it back for a thousand dollars. I done told them the land bank had took it wrongfully and we don't give it back. We'll see who gives five bucks. And we it don't need no appraisals. And this ain't real real estate. The land bank don't appraise them. They entered into them illegal land contracts like they did with Charles. And I said, rather than keep people out of lawsuits, we took them for the first time in 20 years, and I'm going to give them back under what they was giving them back. We'll see what happens. Attorney Millhouse been working on that. Kate Fields and Monica have been the main blockers. Ms. Galloway, Thank you, and Mr. I'm Mr. here to tell you, indulge me like you did, Ms. Clint. Hold up, let me wrap Mr. up, Mr. please. You, we do this all the time. <laughs> let me wrap up. This happens all the time that we wrap up. You just let a citizen wrap up. Mr. Let me say this, Ms. Galloway. From the time I have been in here, you've been trying to throw me out on the tech. I'm going to be quiet. I want to address the rest of them. I was out there walking the day. Guess what? We'll see if they get to the business of supporting it. The mayor issued a letter. Police sitting out there. You know, in the day, police was going. So sometime I'll keep talking. I'm glad they let you wrap up because I don't want them discriminating against me. God bless the citizens of the city of Flint. I'm not going to give up my voice. I'll address the rest of them later on in this meeting. Thank you, sir. Rich, that includes you. Yeah, I just want to touch on the fact that you're, uh, my, my family is UAW family. Uh, family members that still work there today, family friends that went to the line, but I think that the strike is definitely important. It's important to keep in mind the strike isn't only affecting UAW uh, members, but their families at home, and also members who work for Lear and other third parties uh, who are currently laid off uh, due to the strike. So it's definitely impacting our community. Uh, and I, I would hope that the rest of the council stands with supporting uh, these UAW members in this time. I mean, the UAW has not only made a difference here in the Flint community, but the United States and across the world as well. So you do know I, I do support the UAW. Um, and in regards to the other issue about the, uh, I guess, the uh, politics and the drama that's been going on, I, I personally don't like it when, uh, regardless of your candidate, you guys throw mud at everybody. I think that we should always be focusing on actual policies and what our candidate believes in. Uh, as an elected official, when we campaign, we say, here's what we're going to do, and here's what we're done, and not, as, not trash the other individual at all who's running for office. I think, uh, unfortunately, it's been done like that for ever since politics has been around. Uh, but I hope that together, um, as, a, as a nation, as a community, we can kind of put it into that and show us, show the community by supporting your candidate in a positive way uh, and not attacking others. That's all. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Claire, that, I don't think people really realize the seriousness of what's going on out on Bass. Like, I worked in the shop, and uh, this is 2019. We finna hit a serious crisis, not only in the city of Flint, but in this country. Because now what's happening is the greedy is getting greedier. And uh, they ain't trying to rectify or reason with the workers no more. So now they, it's blatant disrespect to the workers, and it's not right. 
the, the, the poor is here and ain't going to work. Not only should this council body do something, but should the stakeholders. I mean, that's the Mox, the Ridgeway Whites, the Tim Hermans, and everybody else should stand up on behalf of the workers because they're the ones who built this, this community. Jim Motors was born in this city. And it's not just a speech. Them people are missing their paycheck, their groceries, and mm -hmm. losing their houses and cars. So, and that's all over the country. And we sitting here the same reason these folks in here talking about houses. To Miss Libby Bell, I used to do her hair. She's absolutely right, but my only issue is this, and I told Councilman Mays anybody. Hell, there's more than just nine people. People are hurting all over this community, and certain things cause us to be in a certain situation. And with that house, I looked it up on the portal, land bank portal a minute ago. One of them is a land bank property. And I looked up, I can look up any of the properties while I'm sitting here. But to, I'm saying that to say this. Land bank don't want to hold. They got immunity. They don't have to do nothing. We do. And now nobody fend for the poor. And that's why I sit here every week. And that's why I get pissed when people play with me. It's not a game. People trusted and voted on us to help them. I am their voice. Amen. But now I get in this chair and all of a sudden I become my own entity. It don't work like that. When y'all speak, I got to react. Quincy, whoever, I, they have my personal opinion. People are hurting. People ain't eating today. It's getting ready to get cold. Christmas coming. The kids ain't got nothing. So we got to pay attention. We got to, I'm wrapping up, we got to make sure whatever it is, now it's time to sacrifice for the residents. They, they sacrificed and put us in. Let's learn to sacrifice for them and let their agenda be heard. And I'm done. And I'm going to attack ladies. Uh, uh, that ain't going to happen. I'm done. Ms. Worthing, thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as the properties, there's not one council person that doesn't want to do right by our residents. Um, there is a proper procedure uh, that we should follow. And we cannot pick and choose uh, who gets to keep their house and who doesn't. Um, it's, it doesn't look good, it's not good government policy to say I'm going to save you from losing your home but while this other person suffers. There has to be procedures, it has to be fair, and that is what um, many of us have been saying all along. We would love to help people, but this was never a trial policy. This was, there's no policy in place to make it fair. We, we have this huge policy for medical marijuana facilities. Um, they have to fill out a form, and then they have an application process. That is a policy. It's not, I'll pick this person to save their home. They can only afford 100, so we'll sell it back to them for 100. This person can afford 1,000, so we'll sell it back to them for 1,000. Um, my residents in my ward uh, would not appreciate me picking and choosing winners and losers, and I'm not about to do that. That's not my job. I want fairness. And so, um, you know, there are water accounts on some of these properties that are not paid. And guess who has to pay those when we uh, disrupt a process without procedures? The taxpayers, the people in my ward. So I, my ward is happy uh, with my decision making. I have not heard one person complain. Uh, in fact, I've heard support of this. We need to have a fair policy because then people will just let their homes go not pay their property taxes, that's not fair. And then we'll say, we'll rescue you. Oh, but that person doesn't get rescued. Um, and so that is that is why some of us are not in for this policy. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you to be respectful. Thank you, sir. Um, and so next is Mr. Griggs. Uh, no, I'm all right. You said time? Miss Wendy Carter? Are you all saying Okay, and so I want to um, say to you, um, I am sorry that you have felt a certain way about me and my decisions for these properties. I think that um, you haven't followed closely. It's not that I don't support what's going on. I'm policy and procedurally driven. And the reason why I do that is because it takes away feelings and emotions. Right now, for you, you see that I may be withholding from somebody, but this council voted on a policy that had like eight different things, A through H, and it said the policy looks like this. But what has happened is there are certain members of this body that are usurping that, and they're making promises to individuals as if they are the council. 
And so what happens is once they promised you something, they bring it back and now your emotions and how you are attached to the home, I'm, I'm asking you to just hear me out. And now what has happened is now this council is forced to honor something that one council person brings to the table. It's not fair. All I said is we need to make sure that we are consistent in following the policy that we did. And as long as we do, I want you to have your house. But there have been prices put on houses that have been um, taken back from the treasury. And now one house is a dollar, one house is 500, one house is a thousand. But there has been nothing policy driven that has allowed us to tell this community why we came up with those figures. That is the only concern that I have shared. I have never said that I would not help get a house back. I voted yes on the Fleming house. I voted yes on this young, I think it was you, who, someone's mother lost their house. I voted for them. I voted to help the house of, house of Esther. And so as long as it's policy and procedure driven, not emotion, I will help. And so Madam I don't know Chair. if you need a copy of that. I can get that Madam for Chair. you. Um, Madam, real quick. If, if you show me a house that we offering for a dollar, I eat all these agendas. Who said a dollar? You just said I didn't. A I said a hundred. No, you just said a dollar. I didn't. Didn't she no, just say? Didn't she just say a dollar? Amen. Yeah, you don't argue all the time. I thought I said you argue all the time. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. So we are on our agenda portion of resolution. Is there a motion for this body? <laughs> We're on resolutions now. Mr. Lamb. I mean, Mr. Gare. No, you weren't here. You did an agenda. So now we're on resolutions. All right, uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to send 190376 to council. There's a motion to send 190376 to council. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Madam Chair, I would second. That motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. This is the resolution that's dealing with the properties, Liberty, and the properties um, that's been talked about. And so the resolution dealing with these properties, which should be attached to our agenda, um, 6722 Fleming Road, 190. They doing going one by one. I yeah, but the, the prices ain't all right, is my point. What's your point of order? You called it on me. I'm well, going to just listen because I got the flow. We're on 5306. That's okay. I know how to make my point. You think I don't know how to talk? What's your point of order? That I can't talk? I don't know what that is. Mr. Mays, you're supposed to relate to the agenda. I'm going to relate to the prices. Oh, God. Why are you interrupting me? I could have been back there. Mr. Mays. Yes, Miss Galloway. What did you say? I mean, I continue. Well, thank you so much. The prices that's been said and heard ain't all proper. Now, the one on Jefferson School is a thousand. We've had that property for four years now. I've been talking to Pastor Aldrich and Mr. Quincy Murphy. Miss Fields gives speech about this property was picked out arbitrarily. No, it wasn't. Every year, I want y'all to know, from the third ward to the fifth ward to the fourth ward, I'm glad to meet y'all and talk. I want everybody to know that every council person at this table had an opportunity to pick out one or two properties of people in their ward. We get a list every year, and we can look and see. We got block clubs. When people get in trouble, we try to help them. No councilman but one and picked out property. Because I found the law that said we could keep them before they go to the land bank. And we can control our own neighborhoods, residential and commercial. Once I did that, people went wild. But I was able to garner five votes by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And so now we got it. So they should have been transferred back because we don't want to carry the liability. We want to get them back in the folks' hands, in my opinion. We called it a pilot project. Every year I ask them to pick property. Nobody do it but me. 
I squeeze votes out, and then the naysayers keep blocking the transfers back. I bet you we gonna get them transferred. I'm just that diligent. You shouldn't say that. They gonna challenge you. That'll be a bad challenge. Jefferson School, city owned. It was a water distribution site for years. A water distribution site. We ain't paying the consumers, we ain't paying the water bill, but it's a city owned water distribution site. Ain't that something? And they wanna drain the person. In this case, it come up Miss Galloway and Steve Branch, I think, found it. $36,000 water bill. That's what my question was. Why hadn't it been turned off? Is it not been turned off because it's a water site that the city been using? My position is, let's take care of it. We used it. Folks been paying consumers. We ain't got no lease. Transfer that building back and get it out of our hands. It's so big, it's liable. Get it out of there. I wouldn't care if it was a dollar. Transfer, that's the longest one we had, the first one, four years. After that, when we go through this list, watch when you hear this. Oh, watch when y'all hear this. I have to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll be voting to transfer Jefferson School back, and I want to refer to the next committee meeting, the discussion on the... Um, water bill. Let me say this, through you, Madam Chair, to the city attorney. Attorney Millhouse is who I work with is developing the policy that we done voted on and passed for the transfer that I'm wondering if Ms. Worthy know it's a policy in place to transfer back. It ain't arbitrary. We done voted on the policy for transfer. Mr. Millhouse, through you, Madam Chair, and Mr. Millhouse, can you read the policy and elaborate on the current water bill language that we discussed and put in there for the sake of this body and the public. Mr. Milhouse? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> My time ain't up. Nine seconds? You got to be kidding. You mean I talked for five minutes? You got to be kidding. Well, it was good talk. I got nine seconds and I'm still going. We're just talking about the policy with respect to the water bill? That for right now is my question. The water bill must be current and the owner or occupant owner or occupant shall sign a declaration of occupancy and if applicable be responsible for any outstanding water bills and pay current monthly bills plus ten percent. Now in nine seconds, real quick, one second. What does that mean? Declaration. How many seconds? This is crazy to run government like this. The, a water affidavit or a declaration of occupancy is the same thing to hold, to hold that person liable for that water bill. They accept responsibility. Real quick. So current, they think it has to be zero. That ain't your interpretation. How many seconds left? I'm sorry. Are you talking to me again? Oh, Lord. Somebody better get them. Yeah. I'm saying if, 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 if they're responsible for it and we do the declaration, then it don't have to be zero, do it? Uh, how many seconds left? I ain't silly. Did you answer? It doesn't have to be current. You understand the... the, 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 the it has to be current. Not zero. Not zero. Right. Right. Current, we pay the 10% 10 and the current... Of the current. Yeah. That was your interpretation when you did that, Lee. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> anyone else? Because Mr. Mason's time just keeps Mr. Gara and Mr. Request for information. What's your request? For Shouldn't it be more important to do policy and law than time? Change the rules, Mr. Mason. We'll do it. Again, okay, y'all ready to vote? We I move to suspend them right now. And let's see how many vote. You don't have the floor to do that, Mr. Mays. Go ahead, You Mr. out of order for talking. You ain't the chair. Warn her. That's Mr. what you do with Mr. the Mays. brother. Mr. Mays. You see her talking when you... Please. You're out of order. Please. Thank you. Mr. Weir. Yeah. yeah, so just to be clear, um, with that understanding, the second chance church, if they receive the property, they would have to pay the, whatever the current bill is monthly and then the 10% of the, uh, whatever the outstanding bill is. According to the policy, yes, sir. So it's 
completely. So, so that, that actually helps clarify things up for me, and I think the church was originally, uh, when we were talking about this motion last time, I thought they would have had to pay their whole outstanding bill uh, when they received the property in Quaglo policy, but that clears it up for me, and I have uh, no problem moving forward and giving this uh, property to the church. Um, so hopefully the rest of the council can send this motion to council. Um, I mean, this property was pulled before I was elected to city council, and I think that having that huge building there uh, it not only makes the city liable, um, but also it kind of takes away from a tax base and we could potentially be getting uh, the church itself that there does a great thing for the third ward. They do lots of community events. Uh, they're always having, they have gym, they, they have the gym when they're for the kids, they have programs, uh, they have reunions. Um, so I hopefully council can agree to at least get this property uh, moving forward. Just due to all the things going on, I know that it's going to be a good thing. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, two things. One is, um, how does a person buy one of these properties? Does anybody, can anybody answer that? Is he asking me? I'm asking anybody. Anybody, can I answer? Uh, Aren't you on the border? Who, she didn't call on you. you. I want anybody to answer me. Mr. Mays? We don't have to buy them, Mr. Griggs, because we buy state law. We can, we've got to write the first refusal before they go to the auction or the land bank. So we don't have to buy them. Now, we can sell them and put them out for bid, and anybody can buy them. But what we did was copy some of what we've seen. We offered a right to first refusal for owners and or occupants because that's what we are able to do by law. So in some cases, we didn't want to remove people from them houses. We wanted people to keep their houses and have a second chance. Now, they might not get a third chance, and it ain't but, it ain't but 10 or 20. So the question you asked was, who can buy them? Whoever we set up policy to allow to buy. I meant to ask that of the attorney. You said anybody. Well, I, I know. I made a mistake. I know, because I knew the answer. Okay, so your question again, how does a person do it? Say, I want to buy this property, 1113 West Hamilton, $100. Well, if you were that person living, I, I don't know about $400, but basically. That's what it says. Okay, to answer your question, though. Point of order. What's your point of order? Didn't you tell me to stay on the one property if you're slipping? Be on a different property. Okay, Mr. Then, uh, Mays, you talked all that time. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You should um, be ashamed okay, of yourself you know, for discriminating. Okay, to 5306. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, generally speaking, the policy is uh, designed to set up for that. Can you please be quiet? I can't hear the attorney. I don't want to be It was about to be lost to the land. Mr. So. You feel correct. Can you, Mr. Mays, Hey, please. look, point of order. What's your point of order? If she hollers out, she feels threatened to be she slick. She did say, say that. that. She said, I don't want to be addressed. Okay, so this means so what should Mays, happen. I got the right to call any members of the audience to order. You so my yes I do. Okay. I'll read the rule. Please do. Okay. Um, but point in the of meantime, order. what is your point of order? You rule and I don't? Mr. Mays. You you don't. You're okay, I appeal the rule. There's another an appeal chair. of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? There's an appeal of the decision. There's an appeal. We, of, so show me where that is, Mr. May. You it's no, in there. You ruled and said it wasn't. You the chair. I guarantee you, any member of the council can Does call a member of the public to order. Does he have the floor? We're gonna show you. Yeah, we in an appeal. No, and she don't know. Floor. You out of order. This is a second one. Uh, then he doesn't appeal on the floor. And, and you sorry. should get out of that. Miss Galloway, point of order. Why is she doing He does not have the floor. You need to stop talking. You need to stop talking. And please, stop talking. Mr. Mays, you have been warned, and you're next. You're out of here. You've had three warnings. So I'm asking you to just wait until we're done. Thank you. This says the chair. Mr. Mays, why don't you look it up, Mr. Appeal? You're the, the chair. Here. You, why, I got a you have a point why of order. Are you talking to me? Can I talk? Please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll tell you where it says that any member of the council can call a member of the public to order. They don't get the right to howl out like words and do. <laughs> I guarantee you, you know it's in here. That's why you second the pill. She the chair and don't know the root. I'm going to guarantee you, 100%. Any other questions?
participation and maintenance of order. I'm on page 19. Yeah, please, please, 19 of 23. Right. Read that, Mr. Mays. I, no, I don't know what that's it. You, you, that's it. you said I could talk. Why are you getting well, so high? Chair. It's in here. I'm the chair okay, now. Okay, so now you want me to read quiet, but don't tell me I can talk. Order. And I said two Public words. Public participation and maintain, maintenance of order. Maintenance of order and debate. The public and city council are both subject to the disorderly person or persons ordinance section 31-10 and the general code of conduct. Additionally, the chair or presiding, presiding officer has a responsibility and duty to enforce these rules and sanction for the purpose of maintenance of order. Only the chair or presiding officer may determine and rule on who and what is in or out of order. Violation to these rules shall result in the removal from the meeting. We've read this on multiple occasions, you guys. That ain't the only rule, Miss Galloway. Do you realize that? We gonna read you the rule. Just hold on with your excited self. So I'm gonna read mine just as excited as you read yours. Hold on. Does anybody else have any discussion while we're waiting? Well, I've got the oh, oh, no, no, yeah, on the appeal. On the appeal. We're on the appeal. You got something oh, on the appeal? Yeah. Mr. Garrett? Clarify the appeal. It's just him feeling you that he ruled somebody out first? Yes. You saying no, he said That's what the rule okay. yeah. I just oh, read yeah. the rule. And he said okay. I was ready. I'm ready. Go May ahead. I? Go ahead. Okay, I would like to go to page 21 of 23, and the rule is um, rule um, 29.6. I'm so excited. Any person while being heard at a council meeting may be called to order by the president or any council person for failure to be germane or vulgarity of personal attacks or persons or institutions for speaking in excess of a lot of time. So even though I'm hearing that that's when they're speaking, it says that um, they could, when they're being heard. And if I heard them, I'm going to call them no other as a council person and take it from there. So I heard them, didn't they? And I know it was in there that a council person can call a member of the public to order when he hear them. And that's what it literally said. So when I hear them at a council meeting, guess what I did? Call them no other because it makes sense because it will be chaos if folks from the community could just holler out they your buddies, you ain't saying nothing, and we can't say nothing, or we gonna get threw out for calling members of the public order. Now, I know that lady from your ward. I know she got a different thinking. She said it, she been here before. And she got a different thinking about men and order and what women do and say. So I'm like, hold up, ma'am, you really can't do that. Now, rather than you say to her, ma'am, you can't do that, you checking me because I'm trying to keep the chaos down. So my position is the same. If you say we can't call a member to order, I say we can. And I done proved that in, in 29.6, any council person can call a member of the public to order. And that was my point. You thought we couldn't? I say we can. Go ahead, Mr. Garrett. Here. She's um, speaking in excess of a lot of time. Here we go. She's got two minutes. Did what he stated, and maybe out of context, that's what it says, and that's how I take it. Maybe it was maybe one of those things need to be. Um, however, I don't think that you were calling her out of order. And the situation, let me kind of explain myself. I don't Request think you were. Request for information. Has she <coughs> passed a, a lot of minutes? What she spoke of. For two minutes. Yeah, to, to my to my point, I don't think you were calling her out of order, so I don't think what you're referring to is in this current situation. However, I do think that council members would be allowed to call somebody out of order. So I'm kind of torn with this decision making. So I would support your decision of saying that she what she said is not right. However, it doesn't mean that you, what you were doing to her was right. Does that make sense? That yeah, do make sense. It makes sense, sense to me. Yeah, my, uh, my, I don't quite know what she said. She said. I got the answer I needed. <laughs> oh, okay. 
So, so I, I, I don't agree with my colleague. Um, this specifically that Mr. May shared was any person while being heard at a council meeting. She wasn't being heard. She is FaceTiming live and he began to look Request directly at her camp camera and, and he was even wrong on what he Request said. What is your request for information? It's a whole thing. It says when they done spoke in excess of their life, she spoke. You so you you stretch it and, and my colleagues can agree to allow him to stretch. He was trying he wasn't ruling her out of order. He mistake what she said. She just said, I do not want to be addressed. And he thought that she said something totally different. So he wasn't even ruling her out of or I mean out of order. And so what he is saying is not I shouldn't have even been appealed. But here we are anyway because this is what happens. They're not the same thing. If that's what allows you to make your decision, you can. You only get to speak once. Every person gets to speak once. You get to make your decision. And so what you said you is twice, not related. And I'm speaking. This is so my last person, time. You get to speak twice. Thank you, sir. You're so, always so right. So many and so that is. You are the speaking out of order. It is. But so unless see, you got to the councilman. Point of order. If you warned me for speaking out of order, she just did it. So warned her as well. Point of order. Yeah. Point of order. But this, what's your point of You guys. Can he stop screaming at other members of council? He should. He himself he should. is. He never should. follows the rules. He should. But unless you guys are willing to do something, that's what it is. Point of and order. so what is your point of order, Mr. Did Mays? you rule on her point without screaming at council members? You said he should. Your point when she said point of order, your job is to say, I rule in favor of against it. I, I scream. That she when I scream, you're gonna know, know it. Thank you, Mr. Mays. <laughs> So, um, all in favor of the decision of the chair say aye. 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 Those that oppose. Yeah. And so, Four it, three, it, it, it still fails. The appeal fails. The we know it chair. Okay. Made. Thank you. So, where are we even? Ms. Worthing, did Mr. Bridge, were you sure? Yeah, I, I was at the floor. And, yes. And yeah, he was on my own. Did you I, 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 no. You were okay. on I said I had two items. He went back. And okay. the first okay. item I was asking the attorney, mm -hmm. how he's going to go about buying this place. Well, it depends on the, uh, the occupant. The resident is occupied, and they had the right of first refusal. Okay. Because we're not keeping them out. And going through this project pilot program, those occupants uh, had contracts or had agreements with the land bank, because the land bank had already taken over. And uh, so those people then uh, were responsible, and we kept, they kept that contract with them. And whatever that was, we abided by that. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my second point is, should we do this as a blanket resolution? There's about 10 of them here. Can you amend, amend your motion? I'd like to amend the motion. Can do a blanket. Point of order, madam. Why is she howling out no to him and he got the flow and he do have the right to make an amendment and you letting her do that? You want me to start interrupting and howling out yes and no and you going to say something to me? Do you really hear her? I do. Okay, will you tell her she's out of order? Let that man do his thing. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Um, Griggs. Do you want to make a um, substitute motion? Can yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll motion, uh, a blanket resolution from 190376 down to 190398. There's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 resolutions. Stop. Send to Calvary. There's a motion on the floor to send resolution 190376 through 190. 398 to council. Is there a second for that motion, Mr. Davis? That's it. It's been moved and seconded. Um, actually, you guys, wait a minute. I will. Um, Miss um, Worthy. Thank you. Can can we hear from administration? Um, I don't know, Mr. Branch. Did you have anything to say about this policy? How it would affect mm -hmm. the city? Okay, then. Um, to the attorney, 
how are these amounts being decided that these uh, individuals are going to receive their home back? One is 100, another is 500, another is 1,000. Can you explain that to me, please? Well, I can explain what the policy says and how it's uh, designed and set up in the policy. And again, uh, it states to uh, those folks that already had an agreement with, because this is the first time. Uh, this policy was drafted based on the pilot. And the pilot, these houses that council was supposed to pick out and council picked out, maybe it was Councilman Mains and went around, he showed us the houses. We went to each and every one of these locations. Uh, most of them were occupied at the time. We met the folks. These folks had uh, uh, agreements with, with the land bank already. And whatever those agreements were, because these houses were lost, these houses would have been lost to the land bank. And based on the, the way the policy was drafted, because they were already in agreement with the land bank, and we weren't going to take the house and then uh, not honor the agreement that they had with the land bank. So that's how those amounts were decided. That doesn't, no, the land bank would have taken the home I'm telling you what we did. I don't know. I'm concerned when you say we because I don't know where okay. you came in on this decision well, process. Don't. It's council. Request for information. Request for information. Y'all talking to each other and don't hear me? No, you I'm should warn sorry. yourself. When I went and whispered right. to him, you warned him and wanted to throw me out. So I'm saying, point of you chairing and whispering and warn yourself in him. You got me for whispering to my colleague, didn't she? What did you ask? My point, request for information, was she said, we. Do you realize he's a city attorney? Thank you, Mr. Mays. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? that? Tell me how did he I, get in? I do. Mr. Mays, please. I realize he's the city attorney, but I don't remember having conversations with him at all, ever, about this. I personally didn't vote for it. This is bad policy. I, I do. I personally, Eva Worthing, did not vote for this. It's bad policy. It's two pages long. Those that have real policies in place, and I would hope as a city attorney that you would be directing some council members who come to you uh, with the knowledge of other policies. Can you provide us with, like, maybe Detroit's policy? or another city's policy, and let's compare it to our two-page policy that we came up at one council meeting one day that one member chose homes, one member, because the rest of us aren't gonna go and choose who gets saved from their homes without a policy, a proper policy. We can call this a policy, but it's really, there is no structure to this. You still have not answered my question. question. How did one house, they're going to get it back for 100. Another is going to get a I house. I don't know anything about a house that's back for 100. It's I, right here. I answered um, your sir, no, sir, I'm asking you again. Please allow me. Um, we just said all of these. So in resolution 190395, it says for $100. Um, it's on page three. Okay. What, what address is that again? It is at 1113 West Hamilton Avenue. Now, is that part of the seven or eight houses of phase one? You asked me about how did I come about this, or we came about this. These, this policy, whether it's two pages or 200 pages, was designed and drafted with respect to phase one, and that was the first set of houses. Now, if it's not within the first set of houses, the rest of them, I have no clue. I don't know. Only know about the seven or eight houses when Councilman Mays, Mays brought it to the attention of the council and suggested that everybody go in their wards and pick the houses. And he ended up doing it because nobody else did. Once he done that, we then used that as a pilot. And as a pilot, we met with the occupants in those houses. Those folks in those houses that we met with had already, these houses were pretty much already in the hands of the land bank. So whether the city, the city was out 
Anyway, bottom line is that had Councilman Mays not stepped in, the land bank was going to take those houses and evict those people. Yeah, because we have an agreement. We made that agreement for the whole city. This is how the process works. Okay. And I, I, I know I'm speaking. I'm on council. I, I will ask you questions. Um, so, first of all, um, you are speaking for Mr. Mays. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm speaking. Really, because when Miss Wheeler was here, when this all began, she had a much different opinion than you, and she did not speak highly of Mr. Mays and his policy. Neither has our planning and development director. So you do not speak for the city, sir. You speak for yourself. What is your request? Does she really call somebody not speaking highly of me like she just said, or she just spoke? Thank you, Mr. Mays. Continue. I remember clearly that Ms. Wheeler objected many times to council coming up with this policy, that it was not so good for us. We, um, and but we're, we're, we're in it now. So whether she spoke or whether she was against it or not, it voted and it passed. And we have to deal with and live with it now. And I want to do that fairly. So how are we coming up with 100, 1,000, and 500? Please, I need an answer on how we are coming up with these amounts, giving them back to these people. Okay. Request okay. for information. <clears throat> First, let me say, what is your request for information? Do she really want to know? I can tell. No, I do not want to hear from Mr. Mays. Mr. Mr. Mays. Mr. Mays. Keep going. How much Mr. time she got? Mays. Mr. Mays, she has a minute. And oh, good. Seconds. One minute. Go ahead. Again, I said, as far as the first phase of it, that's all I know with the, the amount that we came up with based on who the agreements. Who the land bank came up with, you keep saying who, it was only the I haven't bank. come up, the yeah. land bank was going to sell these homes back to these people for 100 and 500. No, uh, is that home in the first phase? Is that home one of the first six, seven houses we talked about? Oh. I have no idea. Okay, this then is the first you need to find that out, right? Because that has nothing to do with the policy. The first seven homes was the pilot. The first seven homes were the homes that we're dealing with. If it's a house outside of those seven homes, I don't know. I didn't deal with so that. So then, what is this home within the pilot? I mean... I don't know which address is that. 1113 West Hamilton Avenue. The answer is no. So what is this? This is outside of the pilot. This is... That's the second phase. A second phase... There's no control, the city has no control over this, or we have no policy in place on how, how we are giving these homes back and what about. Well, as far as those houses, those prices, I don't know what who said or how those, but Councilman Mays knows. He can explain that part. Yeah, Yes, because Councilman Mays, on his own, just like Ms. Galloway had said earlier, has went to people, promised them order, things, order. worked out deals without well. coming into council. That could be an, a violation of Open Meetings Act. Meeting was stopped just like I stopped it with you, Mr. Mays. So she she was not he while she while he was talking, she was not in about that? a minute. You just said that a minute ago, right? No, I said a minute and ten. But she was talking. And so, Mr. Mays, you got to stop. So she so still got a minute. Talking. She only used 10 seconds, and I was looking at she the clock. She is. You're wrong. God bless you. You're wrong. No, you're so, wrong. Do you have I know it for else? a fact. There's at this point, I've not gotten my question answered at all. Okay. Um, I, I will not vote for this. I don't know how anyone in responsible government can vote for this. We have not. I still don't know how these homes are being sold, um, how. Um, a proper policy would address that, and I'm making an official referral uh, for policies that other cities may have adopted who have probably done this correctly um, that we could maybe model after. Because before we start promising people their homes, we should have already a procedure in place um, instead of just talking with them, one council person. One council person has took it upon themselves to become a hero and save whoever they want um, from losing their home while trying to make the rest of us look like we don't care. And that's not true. Well, we that's all care. Also, that's up to you guys. Exactly. Right. It's not a we. It's a, I don't know. Who's, that's not my policy and it's not a good one. And we need, for, for Flint City Legal Council, I want to see more. I want to see documentation. I want suggestions on what we should add um, in order to make this right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me tell you what I see. 
Now you're five minutes? I see a lot of I see a lot of politicking that needs to be paid attention to that's going on right now. Because I want to say this. We knock doors and have the residents to I'll wait until y'all see. Mm -hmm. Warning. That's what they yeah, warned me, but so. dark in the middle I'm going to say it again. I see a lot of pol politicking going on. We got doors at houses. The same houses these folks are losing. And we ask them to vote for us. And we're going to let me and I be your ambassador, and I'm going to speak for you and represent you as your council person. Now, hell, we ain't got no problem giving a baby and corporate welfare to the developers. When they do the uh, capital theater, when they do the color, culinary school from my college, we gladly do that. But when a resident get in a fit over in my ward, they need roof. They ain't up a top so there. They don't qualify. Qualification, I mean stipulation, stipulation. I think we need to just go on and work on this policy. People get into a, if anything, I would say this. If we give them them houses, stay there for five years. Put a stipulation in there and make sure the tax stay uh, are current and not delinquent. But I don't see nothing wrong with because we get welfare to these, the abatement to these corporations all the time. If I knock a door and somebody vote for me, I got to make sure I deliver on their behalf. This is one time where it's not about us, it's about them. Like uh, 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 Miss Liberty said, I listen when she talks. If she talks with me, I feel I'm obligated to Miss Liberty represent her when she get in a, a, a tight. Don't nobody want to lose a house. Everybody, whether it's your water bill, phone bill, whatever, it get hard for us. But hell, the residents ain't got nobody to fall back on. So when they come to the council person they put in, we turn our back and say you don't qualify. It's time now to step up big in a big way for our residents. So when I knock, if I knock again in four years, they'll be fighting to put me back in here because they know I'm going to represent them. Why put a person in these chairs and all of a sudden we turn our back on them and tell them about we only do policy. You got, they took chances on you, we got to take chances on them. If the city working on a pilot, let's work this policy because it's all over the country. Why would I say that? I do a podcast that I know y'all don't like all the time, every Saturday. But one thing about this damn podcast, I do, listen when I tell you this. The demise of all of us is sitting there. I got a book on teardown. That don't sound like they're going to bless you and keep your house. I got another book on demolition mean progress. How does it from, from Land Bank? I'm, I'm very astute when it comes to Land Bank down them over there. I know them all. Uh, I know quite a few of the Land Bank as well as they're carrying them. They plan our demise as green one, green two neighborhoods. And I know all of that mess. So, therefore, even with the strike, people don't care about poor. So if we turn our back on poor, we done. It's worse than a, a gentrification. This is a genocide. You got a beautiful school, you got education, you got the College Country Center Academy. It's different classes, but we're here to represent them. Let's stand up for them. It's only seven houses, Mr. Mays. We don't see eye to eye on nothing. But one thing about it, I ain't going to diminish my politics. What's your request? Oh, <laughs> um, no. Well, this is what I'm saying, because we make. I don't use my politics to, to, to mess up good policy. If he did a good policy, it's a good policy. I don't use my personal feelings toward Mr. Mayor. Whether I second him or not, I'm here to get job. When I see people in their eyes and I know how I feel, I need a roof. And I know about Brownfield property. I know about a lot of things this council body don't know. But I know one thing. We written as a demise. And if this council, the people sitting here don't have the money, these corporations that we give all them tax breaks to have. And now you got, they out there holding them picket signs, guess what? They're going to be in here next. So if that policy, bad credit, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. That's out of order. We're going to have to get to where we're helping people instead of helping ourselves. And we got to go out our way to do it. Now is an opportune time to implement a plan with, with our council. Uh, uh, we got plenty of representation. And make this pilot work. Detroit needed, and I've been having a lot of poor community. We're the poorest in the United States. Haven't y'all seen the documentary? So why don't we learn to help people up? That's why I they elected you. I know I would want somebody saying what I'm saying. If I put them in a chair, they'd be all right with me. But me, me, I don't have no horse in this race. I don't know nothing about it, but I know one thing. Everybody needs help. And now give them help when they need it. 
If we take time to just think, I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up right now. Our demise is Flint, whether y'all believe me or not. City of Flint ain't got no money, you're absolutely correct. The stakeholders got billions of dollars. I listen to 1470 today of how they're just moving forward with what they're doing. The mayor got a struggle. Let's do, let's be on the side of the recovery of special <coughs> not the whole city, at least the residents that's put it there. And thank you for thank allowing you, me. Sir. Thank you. Mr. Mann. Yeah, real quick, Mr. Griggs, when you put them all together, <coughs> And we got these goofy five-minute rules. That's not going to give us enough time to detail each one of them. And your motion was to move it to council. I'm smart enough to know this. If you don't vote with it, we might not have five votes. But it's your motion to move it to council. Now, once it gets to council, we might have to detail them one by one. Some of these figures are not right. Um, for example, 6722 Fleming Road, that's in the first ward. She's ready and been ready to present a check for 2900 It says 1000 That wasn't the right figure. And he was right talking about phase one and phase two. To the public, this ain't a, I don't want this word and in my other colleagues who was against this to characterize this as this is a policy that Attorney Milhouse and Mays came up with. This is a policy that five or more council people voted for. That's how it became a policy. And you got people fooling folks, and you know, it's votes I lose. It might be six to three, it might be five to four, but don't put it on Councilman Mays like he did this all by his lonesome set. The fact of the matter is, if you read the policy closely, it says, Upon completion of the above requirements, the city of Flint will meet with each <coughs> occupant or owner to complete the transaction and issue a quick claim deed subject to council approval. So council approval going to have to be given when we do the quick claim deed. It's going to be, that's my interpretation. I don't care what you and her talk about. I'm telling you what it say. It's a policy I help deliver. So what I want to see is once we pass the resolution and whoever for the city goes out to execute this quick claim deed, based upon the policy I'm reading, I'm going to read again. I ain't studying what Ms. Galloway and Ms. Wilcox is talking about. It says subject to Flint City Council approval. I sit in court last week, Attorney Millhouse, with Bob Carmack in Detroit. The city issued a deed and he sold it for 1.2 million and now they didn't mean to issue that deed they sat. So I'm, I, I helped develop this. Before you deliver, issue a deed, it's gonna be subject to council approval. That's what it says literally. Y'all can look at each other, neither one of y'all wanted and shake your head. Before a deed is issued to you, Liberty, it should be drafted, and I see it, subject to council approval. That's what the policy says, Ms. Winfrey Carter. That's what the policy says, subject to council approval. And so that's what I mean, and that's what was developed. And there's reasons these safeguards was put in here so people just can't do nothing. So I told council last week, Y'all can go knock on each door. You ain't prohibited. Ain't nothing funny here. Y'all can go out and do the legwork and knock on doors and meet these people. How many have done it? Raise your hand. How many picked out any houses in your ward anywhere else? Raise your hand. Which one you picked? 1901 Borwood. 19, that's in your ward. But who picked it out? Do you know? It came from uh, Suzanne Wilcox's no, I do not. I, you're wrong. No, I, do not. I picked it out. <coughs> yeah, it's in your ward. It's a beautiful condo. I picked it out. Suzanne and them didn't pick it out. Every one of them I picked it out. Wait, Mr. Gary. Okay, I like to hear people. No, we, but that's not. Come on, Mr. Mays. Can we suspend the rules right and let him no. talk? Please finish. Let me it. say this. The one in Wolcott, in the sixth ward, y'all should see it. The most beautiful, the one in your ward, most beautiful. Mm -hmm. They wasn't arbitrary, they was the best. See, when Kay Phil say we did it arbitrarily, now we didn't pick out no junk. We picked out the best. 
and then we agreed on a small amount out of two, three hundred, twenty. And then people give speeches saying people ain't going to pay their taxes because they don't have to. I wouldn't risk it on this group, include me. I'm going to pay my taxes. So it's not that big a deal. And so when you look at the policy of a right of first refusal, we spent good time on it. And the council voted on it. We can amend the policy of first refusal in any of these things. That would be a legitimate discussion if folks want to amend it. Look what it said. Owner or occupant of the property. Okay. May I wrap up? You can wrap up with that last line, yes, sir. <laughs> and enough time. God bless you. Mr. Guerra. Yeah, um, fortunately, legal is walked out, but I would like to make a referral um, for, I guess, the council, uh, this goes to council, to have um, adequate prices for these homes. Uh, if they can look at that the same way they looked at phase one to make sure that these properties are given back a a reasonable price because the attorney earlier stated that he didn't he hadn't seen these numbers or approved. I have a request numbers. for information. What's your request for information? Mr. Guerra, would you be willing to stop them at special affairs? Yeah, I mean they can they can go to council up to we can't get them there, we can send them back to I don't want to get yeah. And so we send the council, hopefully we can get that information by then. Um, and however, I mean you're right to get these policies, get the original homes. Um, I was one of the five. I think that definitely there should be some work um, on the policy. I think that anything can get better. Any policy can always get better and always improve. Uh, to kind of state um, earlier, uh, the attorney has stated that the individuals would have been evicted if the land bank had got it. I would say that's not necessarily completely true because I remember working with Mr. Jones, who property was pulled by Mr. Mays, um, and I have been working with the land bank, so I would take care of them and get him back in the home one way or another. So one way or another, I think these residents weren't necessarily going to be evicted. They could have worked with, potentially with the land bank. Uh, that, that now, but now they, we have them, so let's work with these residents, because it's important to keep in mind these homes are not to be given to random individuals. It's the right of first refusal policy where they have the right to these properties. Request um, for information. What is your request have for you information? Have you looked at the details of his price? Uh, I haven't, haven't looked at the prices yet. That's why I mentioned for the prices we kind of looked at. <coughs> the right of first refusal policy is there, so these individuals are going uh, to get their homes that they have the right to according to the policy that we passed on council. Uh, and now understanding earlier that that water policy is applied to all of these houses uh, with the 10%, um, it makes it easier for me to know that we're doing it within the legal uh, ramifications that the city has, hearing that from legal. And also these individuals, I think, will be benefiting the city more if they're going to be paying property taxes on their homes now than just staying in a home now and not paying anything. I think that's uh, beneficial for all of them. So hopefully we can get this passed. We've had these uh, in front of us for quite some time now, and I think it's time for residents to feel comfortable in their home I just want to say, I don't know if my colleagues heard that Mr. Milhouse said he had nothing to do with the prices that came up. And so he's not a part of that process. Um, Mr. Mays was clear in saying if you wanted to know how the prices came about, he could answer that for you. Um, secondly, um, Mr. Branch, is it true that the lien or and or I'm sorry, the water bill for um, Second Chance is is there was a forty five thousand dollar lien? It showed at least it said lien for two thousand nineteen that left a bill for thirty six. So the total, according to the water the water bill website is like $80,000. Um, so I don't know, did you look at that? I can pull it up for you if you want to. So the question becomes, will all of that be taken care of? You got, we can answer that at another time. Um, the, the second, for information. What's your request for information? The water still on? Please don't start that conversation. Right. Why not? Because it's people relevant. have, yeah, well, yeah, oh yeah, the water is right. still on. Okay, And good. so, but people are, are exploiting the fact that there are businesses whose water bills are in the 30s, 40s, 60s, 80s, and residents who have water bills of $800 are being turned off right away, and they have to pay $100 to get it turned on the next day, and it's not the next day, it's actually you don't want me to raise these issues. And so, um, but Mr. Mays, thank you. Um, the, the second thing that um, I, I have a question on, um, can you tell me what your address is that you mentioned on here? 
Okay, so according to um, the city's website, and I'm just, just as I consider my vote, um, the water bill is in Willie Anthony Stacker. Is right. that your family? Yes. Okay, and who is that to you? That's my father. Your father. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to understand the right of first refusal. And so um, that is all. Request Suzanne, I, what is your request for information? The right of first refusal has to do with her being an occupant. Do you understand that? I understand that her, the water bill needs to reflect some type of relevancy for a right of first refusal. It says that whoever the property was lost to, Mr. Mays, is the person. Read the policy. Do you read where it says whoever was in there occupying at the time it was lost as well? You see that? I, I, she I, was in there. Councilman Mays, that I, she answered my question. What are you? Why are you involved in what I'm getting clarification on? I'm fine. The right of first refusal to the water bill. She got to sign a declaration. You see that in there? Mr. Mays, if, if that's her father, I got my question answered. Why don't you stop trying to talk for me? Um, for I have a question me, to <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne, would you like to share anything at all, or are you good? Because a lot has been, you know, said about you um, without you having the ability to say something, and I just want to see if you, if you guys can. Um, um, I would agree with uh, Mr. Milhouse that the policy identifies which properties can be transferred. Um, if you look at the policy and you look at the lots that are proposed on the resolutions tonight, only three of them are actually within that first phase. So if you look at those three, I think within that policy, those Request three can be... Request Which particular three? I'll tell you. We'll now that her, like, that's <laughs> sure. through you to her. She talked. Yep. Go ahead, Miss. Um, 1901 Laurel Oak. Mm -hmm. 1736 West Hobson. And 1710 West Home Avenue. Mm -hmm. Request for information. So she don't believe you Jefferson can You cannot take can the floor. Request for information. What is your request she for information? She don't believe Jefferson School is in there? Jefferson School. Well, Go ahead. Would you like me to don't please. listen to anything she said. Oh, goodness. Tell me, she's wrong. Mr. Mays, now you're out of order. You're and you're actually using request a request for information. You're using a request, request for, information for information to take the floor. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. What is your request for information? What if Millhouse was wrong? Millhouse is wrong. What is your request for information? Mr. Mays, 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 what is your request was purchased prior to the policy being adopted by this body. So I am not saying that that property cannot be transferred. I'm just saying that it's outside of the policy that was created. No, so in terms of how the valuation is established, in my opinion, um, the value needs to be established, and it's not an automatic thousand dollars. I'm not saying that you cannot sell that property. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's outside of the policy. Thank you. And then um, also, um, just for the record, Attorney Milhouse mentioned that the land bank had did land contracts in all of the land contracts that were on those three properties and we have them in our record and none of them was for a thousand dollars and so do you have those i actually have the amounts can you tell me and the address please for 1901 laurel oak which is one of the ones you're proposing was a lease for eight hundred dollars was a lease for eight hundred dollars eight fifty yep for my lease not a purchase uh -huh. um for 1736 west hopson avenue it was an option for six thousand dollars. Wait a minute. Say say the address. Six seventeen thirty six West, West Hobson Hobson Avenue. Avenue was an option agreement for six thousand dollars. And seventeen ten West Home Avenue was an option agreement for five thousand dollars. West Home for five thousand dollars. Now I also have the SEVs for these homes, please. Point, so, point of order. What's your point of order? How much time do you have left, Mr. Actually, Delaware? according to our rules, when I am going back and forth with a I department head, point of order. How much time you got days, left? I'm uh, wondering. I you got don't four make it up. minutes. Four minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank You're you. Just making it up. I'm not. Thank you. Go ahead, Suzanne. Please give us those SEVs I'm just for the you record. On your toe. You making it up. Thank you. So, for, this is not actually fair market value. I mean, mm -hmm. typically there's a rule of thumb two times the SEV is fair market value. Okay. But the SEV for Laurel Oak Drive is $14,100. Go ahead, Mr. Mays. Mr. Mays, you are 
disrupting the very thing that you are talking to us. Please let us get through this. She's not leaving. You don't have to worry. She's not leaving. You don't leaving. know what we're talking about. Yes, point of Thank point you. and request for information. Um, request for information. When you saying you about ready to go? Mr. Mays, what's your request don't for information? Don't talk into our bitch. Through you to her. Wasn't you, didn't you been under the weather and been ready to go? Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. You okay. can't speak Thank for you. us. Go no, ahead. Uh, no Ms. thanks um, to you, you talking Mr. Nasty Mays, to me. please stop. You please stop. We've been talking to colleagues for years. Mr. Like this. Mays, you are out of order. I appeal the ruling of the chair. There's an appeal second. of the decision of the chair on the floor. There is a second. So, Mr. Mays did not have the floor and he continued to talk. And so that is why I ruled him out of order. And so, um, any further discussion yeah. on the appeal? Mr. May. Madam Chair, I've been in council meetings for 30 years. You're not gonna scare me from whispering and talking to Mr. Guerra or Ms. Winfrey. That's not out of order. Kate Fields, you everybody do it. We get whisper to our colleagues and try not to interfere. This is the second or third time you done ruled me out of order for having conversation. You were dead wrong because I know she's been feeling under the weather and she's been ready to go. You the one holding up the vote and we know we got five. You can do all you want and I think we gonna pass this vote to move the council. So you can filibuster, you can get information, you can get this information with you and her after we leave out this meeting. We should be passing resolutions, passing resolutions. You got seven days out the week to get with her and can get all this information. Let me say this. This policy ain't specific. Point it's of this. order. We are on an appeal. That's what I'm discussing. Have you no, been you out of move. order? That's correct. So address that, I'm Mr. addressing Mays. that. And at the same time, I'm addressing no. that. I can do what I no, choose. I well, I'm doing it, Ms. Galloway, and you can't handle it. The point is this. When we talking about this, I'm telling you, there ain't nothing in it. Since this is first phase. It's all phases. It says property acquired from Genesee County, period. It don't say property Mr. acquired Mays, you the are first not phase. relevant to and the so appeal. My point and so of your time to her is, is whispering. It ain't no time up. Come on. Whispering to her, whispering to him. You done warned me twice trying to throw me out of his knee, and everybody sitting here know. That you talks to your folks at your seat, Mr. Griggs. We talk, and if y'all vote for her to rule me out order for trying to be polite, whispering to you and you, what is this world coming to? I'll be voting no that we can't whisper to each other. That ain't out of order. Is there anyone else that would like yes, to that would like go ahead? Go ahead. I'll be voting no too that we can't whisper to 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 each other. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's a dumb rule, or whoever rule it is, is that a, is that in the rules? That's not in the rules, is it? So what is the problem? I don't, I don't even understand what's the problem. He, he did, uh, yeah, I don't even, this, this is ridiculous. But you know, the other thing too is, there you go again, speaking to individuals condescending, okay? You don't you don't run this this council. So I think you need to, to chill, Miss Galloway. Seriously. Everything. I rule you out of order. I rule you out of order. Nothing is out of order. By I can whisper to Guerrero, I can whis whisper to Mr. Griggs, I can whisper to Mr. Mays. It's nothing wrong with it. He didn't I mean he didn't do anything out of order. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Davis? No. Okay. And so I just want to say, too, that, that that sounds really appropriate. Councilman Mays, all night, Mr. Griggs has been saying stuff to me, and I've been saying, stop, Mr. Griggs, because I can't pay attention to what's going on in the meeting. You've been consistently addressing that. And what is wrong with it is disrespectful and it's disorderly. Because when we are whispering, we're not paying, I'm, I'm speaking and I'm telling you what has happened. Mr. Griggs was talking to me and I said, Mr. Griggs, please, please stop talking to me. All night, Mr. Mays has been saying, I'll wait for you, I'll wait request for you. For what is your request for information? Well, I'm only doing that because you had earlier ruled me out of order for whispering the gear. I was making a point. 
Other than that, I wouldn't have said it. I don't care what y'all do. I made a point. Yes, you did earlier in the meeting. Begin it. Mr. Mays, the reality is you use point of order and point of information to take the floor, but you are the one that said that whispering is not. And guess what? I'm going to vote to send it to council, too. So whether one of my colleagues leaves or not, you'll be. It is. It is. So just for the record, I'm done. All in favor of the decision of the chair say aye. Those that oppose. What? What? Then the, the appeal of Mr. Yeah. Mays um, speaks, and so I don't want to hear one person say anything to me when, when somebody is whispering to me. Thank you. And so where are we now? Um, oh, I had the floor. You, you know what? We don't need that information. Um, I'll call for the question. Point of order. What's your point of order? Let's just call for the vote. Call for the All in favor of moving set. this, the council say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. So, what resolution are we on now? So that was a unanimous decision to move the to Madam Council. Chair. Councilman Mays. I would move to remove the main dent. Let me make sure ain't that need to be separated. I would move 190406 to Council, 190416 to Council, 190417 to Council, and 190418 to Council. There's a motion to move those resolutions to Council. Is there a second? It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those that oppose. We are now on special orders unless there is a motion by this body to postpone and go to the next Madam one, Chair. Mr. Uh, May. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would um, move to postpone the discussion items um, to the next finance committee meeting. What about the special orders, Mr. May? As well as the special orders. There's a motion to postpone yeah. special orders and <coughs> the outstanding <coughs> agenda items to count, I mean, to the next meeting. Mr. Garrett, there's, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing yeah, that Madam all Chair, you hear Mr. something. May. Yeah, Madam Chair, I don't know. I ask people to look at their agendas over the weekend and look at these resolutions and be prepared to do what we need to do Monday. I did that so we can shoot through these other two committees. And so I'll be voting yes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that opposed. Is there a motion to adjourn, Mr. Garrett? There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Yes, Madam Chair. I second they that motion second. to adjourn. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is adjourned. Well, Mr. Mr. Garrett, I'm final. Chair uh, you chair any legislators? Yeah, like call legislator to order. There's a mo uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Um, any uh, changes to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, anybody wish to address the Council on Public Speaking for legislative? Yes, sir. Mr. Mitchell, please state your name. My name is Bill uh, uh, Mitchell. Can you tell me your name? And our legislators, uh, Ms. Fields, always putting stuff down and taking off, hoping that it don't work about these houses in the house, and always leaving the, uh, the school out because the man got forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 water bill. The school of choice, I mean the church's choice, and that's bad legislation of the people of Flint notice and they're about to do something about it. Like they're about to do something about General Motors going to Mexico and kind of hire them for cheap labor. Take that on the record. Thank you. Anybody else to this council? Anybody else? Anybody else here? Any none? Uh, any council would like to respond? Ms. Davis. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'd like to commend this body for how we slowly start to, to communicate. I, I know it's a struggle, but we're doing better. We're doing a lot better. And uh, I just hope we stay on this road. We still got some uphill battles. But uh, Mr. Chair, you weren't here for the, we actually literally had our rules committee meeting today with Ms. Coco. But I'm starting to see the effect take place because we actually didn't tip over no tables and chairs. We, we got off track. The train ran off the track a hundred times, but not 300. So I commend this body of how we starting to move along on one accord. And hopefully pretty soon we will be a unified body. Thank you for indulging. Can you respond to public speakers? Um, I just love the public. 
and I look at faces and demeanor, and even though R.L. Mitchell was the only one that speaks, I could be reading it wrong because I lose a lot of poker games. But so far, I like these ladies. I'm looking at their demeanor and how they're looking at this meeting. Meetings are educational. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other council members? Any other council members? Uh, hearing none. Uh, first special order 190358.1. Mr. Chair. Chair. I'm going to postpone that. She's not here. Uh, next one is 190032. Mr. May, it's yours. I would ask that it be postponed to the next um, <laughs> governmental act without objection. Uh, I postpone that. Uh, on the ordinances, 190239, amendment ordinance chapter 46. Mr. Mr. Garrett, anybody here to address this ordinance? Um, both of them are still not fixed yet, okay. so they need to be postponed. Mr. Chair, I would move to postpone 190239 and 190323. Um, if we get something together by special affairs, so I'll move, move to postpone them to special affairs. I don't think they'll be ready by then. I'm sorry. To postpone special affairs. Is there a second? Is there a second? A second. A second. Second, and a motion to postpone the second period. Yeah. 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 You have the floor, yeah. you make a substitute motion. What's your substitute motion? I make a substitute motion that we postpone <laughs> to the next legislative meeting. Is there a second? There's a second by Mr. Davis. Uh, is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the reason I was postponing the special affairs because we just had some spillage at the wild, at the sewer spot. Right. And perception wise, when you got spillage and people concerned about sewer spillage, when you got ordinances in the waste while the lady coming in a big project, I don't know what we could get done by Monday. And I don't know what the administration would do. So I always take a slower approach. Rather than postpone it two weeks, if it's dealing with sewage and water, I'll take a slower approach. I, it ain't a big problem if it went to special affairs and they still weren't ready, and then we sent it back. But that's my rationale for moving into special affairs, which is Monday, waiting two weeks, and then we catch some hell for um, some more sewer spillage stuff. So, you know, how can it help it if people don't want to follow that? And that's why I won't be voting to move it for two weeks. I mean, to postpone for two weeks. So we'll be at a stalemate. If she can't slow walk it and then move it back, I can't fast walk it and then look stupid and somebody say, well, why y'all didn't pay close attention to that waste water stuff? So you ain't got but five votes. Now, if somebody want to do an amendment, Go ahead, just get here. Okay, I'll hear it. Yeah, I'm not amended um, to move it to special affairs. It's already, no. that's, that's already the motion on the floor. This one fails, and then it goes back. That was your motion, so if this one fails, it goes back to uh, So, any other speakers uh, to send this to uh, next committee meeting? Say aye. Abstain. No, abstain. Say no. No, it fails. Uh, back to the original motion to send special How many affairs. no's were there? Excuse me. Oh, no. no. Okay. Uh, send special affairs. Are there any other speakers? Yeah. All in favor? Oh, All in favor. Say aye. 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 I saw three hands. Well, he said nay. Right. He didn't do a hand, but he said nay. He said nay. I mean, yes. 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 Five, yes. Yes. five yes. So there were five yes for special yes. affairs. There was five yes. no for yes. the other one. Okay, so now we're on a resolution. one 80590 Now, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mays. Now, these particular policies, I would move to um, postpone and keep them in um, legislative. <laughs> Which policy? All three of them. Um, I can name them by um, for record keeping purposes. Uh, uh, this would be resolution 180590, resolution 180591, and resolution 190011. I would uh, make the motion that they remain in legislative committee until the next legislative committee meeting. Is there a second for that motion? Yeah, we seconded it. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Five. Uh, Ms. Galloway? Um, Mr. Chair, I move that we um, postpone outstanding discussion items 
and adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. It's a second part of Mr. Griggs. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all who said adjourn? Oh, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Meeting is adjourned. Are LA to call the government out into order? Uh, any changes to the agenda? Mr. Um, Mr. President, I would like to um, make a motion to um, postpone all of this agenda to the next <coughs> governmental ops meeting. All in favor, uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. It's been seconded. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I see no real action items on here, and from what I just heard her say, it looked like um, I can support that motion, but I want to call your attention to 190234. That's $750,000. That's about a million dollars that I was setting to the side to help folks with water bills. And so when you hear about all these water bills, I'm proud to say I can help some folks get down from 11,000 to 1,000. I can help somebody get from 6,000 to 500. And so that money is helping. Mr. Branch, counsel, that money is helping. And we should continue to do that. I would have froze the water bills because we wasn't cutting off during the water crisis, they'd have been there. And then people, when we started shut off, they would start afresh until these lawsuits told me whether or not people were gonna be remedied. Because I tell people to sign up for the lawsuits, don't get left out. This was a water disaster, people didn't die. So I will vote in favor of this motion, but it's a lot of important stuff on this governmental operations agenda. And so we got to get to the business. But based upon the late hour, you know, I go to 12 or 1 o'clock. I'm in the club for 2 in the morning sometimes. This ain't nothing. So I'll be voting to do it because we down to just a handful of five. So I'll be voting yes. Is there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any nays, any abstention that has a passing with five, is there a motion Mr. to adjourn? Chair, is there, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there a second? Uh, all in favor of adjourn say aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Any nays? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. I like to call one more to me. Yep, I like to call grants to order. Work out, brother. Is there a resolution? Mr. Chairman, I would move to adjourn this entire agenda and to the next Then I'm quiet as a church mouth. Mr. Uh, President, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that to council. Resolution number... Hold on one second. There is no, any change to the agenda? No. No. Uh, any public speakers? Yeah, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yeah. I would like to do a chance to the agenda that we only going to vote on the one resolution and then adjourn the meeting after public speaking. Yes. Yep. Okay, so change the agenda. Yes. Uh, yes. Is any and all in favor of that say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Uh, any no's? All right, so on resolution 190419, where's the council? Well, first, yeah. there's... The public speaker, sir. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Do you have the... Sir? <laughs> about... Yeah. Yeah, what? I'm going yet. Go ahead. Uh, sir, about these le legal situation. We hiring these outside lawyers to hire our own to represent us five hundred dollars an hour like here's the one right here and he just y'all ask him questions but but General Motors playing hardball with us and they're gonna try to get rid of the, the down low place of Smith's on my being nothing in the site of Cattery College and my college and and they study trying to put in your territory Mexico and for cheap labor and I keep coming back. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, it's as you refrain from making racial comments like that to do your Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, any uh, resolution yeah, okay. with the council pleasure? Wait, hold on. Is there any other public speakers? Is there any council? Oh, oh Lord, you're going to speak. Mrs. Lewis, mm -hmm. will you please stand up and identify yourself? Uh, my name is Tamara Lewis, and I am a city of Flint resident. And um, I just have a something I would like to say. There, um, one of the council people 
attended a black club meeting and was participating in some defamation of character. And so I would like for the city council president is here to address that. Um, the council, when you are at council meetings, you're covered under our policies and you're covered under our insurance. But when you go out into the community and you personally defame people, you're creating a litigious situation that the taxpayers will have to pay for. So I will absolutely talk to Mr. Winfrey personally about this incident, but I would just like to bring it to your attention um, that you know uh, one of your colleagues you know, is out there doing that, and that that is an issue for the city. And I'm speaking money-wise, um, because whenever there's a litigious situation, whether it's the council, whether it's the administration, whether it's the employees, the taxpayers pay for it. And so that's all I have to say. Mr. Mr. Lewis, is there any other council, are there any other public speakers? Are there any other public speakers? Uh, hearing none, the council like to respond, Mr. Mays. Yeah, um, so she spoke under public speaking. Ms. Lewis, was it me? No. Okay, so. I'm curious to know, but I don't want to embarrass nobody except for myself. I don't mind, so that's why I asked the question that way. And so I apologize for any time I make anybody feel a certain way because I'll do it and then I'll come back, just like the other day. We got an agreement, I call you your highness, but I can be a little snappy sometimes. But I'm a crybaby, I feel bad when you have problems with folks. So I look forward to trying to address it, and I appreciate you coming to council, to President Winfrey, or to the council as a whole. And anytime it's a way to talk about it privately, that's better than publicly, so you did it in a certain way. And my heart is heavy, because I'm gonna probably be dead and gone in a minute, and what we do and how we treat people living is what counts for me. I'm here to tell you, I sure hope the Lord give me some favor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Is there any other council members that'd like to respond to the public? <clears throat> any other council members? Uh, hearing none, move this to the one item that you would amend the agenda, which is resolution 190419. What's the council's pleasure? I thought we moved it to council. Mr. Galloway, is there a second? It's been properly seconded by Mr. Briggs. Is there any discussion? Um, Real quick, if Mr. I Mays. vote no, it fails because we only got four. Correct. We need every single five mm -hmm. vote to Correct. move it to council. Correct. I'm going to vote to move it. Is there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there any notes? Any abstentions? <coughs> Passing with five votes. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mays. You know I ain't going to make that motion that's needed right now because I like to meet. So I'm going to be quiet and let somebody else make. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Galloway. I'm going to make the motion that we There's a second for that motion. The proper thing like Mr. Briggs is all in favor. Say aye. Aye. Any nays? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you.